Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Little Bumble Bear's Let's Play. I'm your host as always, Chris and Little Bumble Bear, and we're continuing the Nancy Drew series. We are back with game number seven. Nancy Drew, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake, made in 2002. I guess they made two Nancy Drew games in the same year. They started pumping them out faster, if I remember correctly. They were trying to release a game every spring and fall of each year for a while, which was super cool. There was, yeah, yeah typically two Nancy Drew games per year for a while. So in the last episode, we were playing the sixth game, which was Secret of the Scarlet Hand. So go check it out. I have a playlist with all the Nancy Drew games up to this one, and I'm going to continue through the series. So stick around. If you like the video, if you're a Nancy Drew fan, Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below telling me if you have memories playing this game or your favorite Nancy Drew game, anything Nancy Drew related, just talk to me about it. I love meeting other fans of the franchise. And please subs uh, subscribe, <laughs> consider subscribing to the channel uh, for more awesome Nancy Drew content, other Let's Plays, and of course my Twitch archives because I stream on Twitch Friday and Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. We're currently going through the Kingdom Hearts series, currently on Kingdom Hearts 3. Go check out my playlists and catch me live on Twitch and say hey. <laughs> also, feel free to follow my social media, Twitter and Instagram. It's all a little bumble bear. This is being filmed in front of a live Discord audience. If you'd like to be in my Discord for Let's Play recordings and just being a part of the community in general, the Beehive, let me know. Post in the uh, comments, I'll get you an invite. All right, all that info aside, let me greet my amazing co-hosts, as always, Vic and Sunny. Hello, you two. Hey, what's up? Hey. Kristen. I'm good, I'm good. Are you ready for more Nancy Drew? Yes. Yes, yes I am. Alright, so what what are your initial thoughts when I tell you the game is called Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake? What are you expecting? Should be it should be in October. Be <laughs> I'm in October. I, I'm presuming some ghosts and some dogs. Oh No, it's actually gonna have cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The game's all about cats. Yeah. Cats. Mm-hmm. Well, as always, we're going to see if Sonny guesses who it is correctly, because he's been on a roll the last two or three games. You have figured it out. Uh, yeah, there's yeah, there's a couple. There's uh, one game. There's one right before the last one, I think, right? Okay, or well, at least last... I didn't necessarily guess. Okay, well, you've gotten at least two or three right in the series so yeah. far. Is that more fair to say? Three. Okay. Yeah, I think three. Three out of six. Half, halfway. Halfway. Let's see. Oh, anyway. Well, let's jump right into the mystery, shall we? All right. Dogs, dear Ned, remember Sally McDonald, the woman who took those photos that Dad has up in his office? Well, she just bought a house in Moon Lake, Pennsylvania. All right. A gangster named Mickey Malone built it back in the 20s as his country getaway. We're talking major fixer-upper. Anyway, last night Sally called and she said she desperately needed my detective skills. She refused to say why over the phone. Naturally, I said I'd drive to Moon Lake immediately, but weird things started happening the moment I pulled up. First, this big tree fell down behind my car and has me totally blocked in. And then I discovered that Sally's gone. She left a note that suggested something terrible happens here at night. She's supposed to call me from her car. So here I sit, writing to you while I wait for the phone to ring. It's nighttime, and although part of me is dying to know what frightened Sally away, another part of me is starting to feel a little uneasy. I'll let you know what happens. Ever yours, Nancy. It's all coming from inside the car. Were you under the impression we were waiting in the car for like a phone call in the car when she said that? Um, no, I think she moved out, but she, um, I think Sally's gonna be calling her from inside the um, car. Okay. Let's see. Do we get a phone call? We do. This call was coming from inside the house. Hello, Nancy. Hi, it's Sally. We have to talk fast because I'm in my car and my cell phone's running low, so we might get cut off. But did you see my note? Yes, are you all right? No, I feel awful bailing on you like that. You must think I'm such a flake. I'm just yes. worried about you. What's wrong? I couldn't stand the thought of spending another night there. 
I knew you were on your way, but it didn't help. I just got too scared. Hmm? What's to be scared of? It's so peaceful and quiet here. Just wait until it gets dark. Then you'll see. What am I saying? Nancy, you shouldn't be there by yourself either. Why don't you just go get in your car and go home? Or drive to Philadelphia. My aunt's got plenty of room. One of your trees seems to have other plans for me. What do you mean? Let me put it this way. Unless someone who just happens to have a chainsaw just happens to come by, my car is not going anywhere. Oh, the dead maple beside the driveway. Oh, they told me it was in danger of falling over when I had the place inspected. I just never got around to doing anything about it. Listen, call M's Emporium. That's a store on the lake. Emily knows everybody. She'll know who to call if she decides to answer her phone. It's late. Won't the store be closed? Where's my brain? Okay, look. I just bought a little outboard motorboat. I haven't used it yet, but the guy who put it in for me said it should run just fine. It's tied up at the dock out front. Just get in it and go. Go anywhere. Just get away from the house. Why? What on earth do you think is going to happen? The dog! Those dogs! Out of nowhere! They're just outside howling and snarling! Teeth and claws! Horrible! Dogs? Hello? Did you say dogs? Hello? Come on. Good old doggos. What could happen? What could possibly happen? Hmm. Good old doggos. That. <laughs> uh... Sorry, I found that funny. <laughs> huh? Something's out there. Now look what you've done. That was a Strix Varia. At least I think it was. Never know for sure now, will I? Uh... Well, you're weird. I'm sorry, but you startled me. What are you doing out here? Birds. I'm trying to look for birds. What are you doing out here? Looking for you! I'm Nancy Drew. I'm staying in this house, and I heard a lot of weird noises, so I came out here to investigate. That was me, Miss Nancy Drew, calling in birds. And doing a pretty good job of it, too, till you showed up. Where'd you come from, anyway? I drove in today from River Heights to visit my friend Sally McDonald. Now why would you want to do a thing like that? The Malone house is no place for one young woman, let alone two. What do you know about the woman living here? I talked to her a couple of times. But you know, the last time I saw her, she wasn't doing so good. She acted real anxious, scared. Did she say what was wrong? The dogs. The dogs of Nicky Malone. Legend goes that when Malone was finally arrested and hauled away, his four dogs went running off into the woods and were never seen again. People would just hear them, howling like their hearts were broken every night until one by one, they all died and went silent. But every time someone tries living in the Malone house, back they come. Are you saying Sally's house is haunted by ghost dogs? Every night, ever since she moved in, you could hear them howling. And some nights, the dogs would appear outside the house, running around, snarling and barking and throwing themselves at the doors and windows. And then, they'd be gone. They're buried in the cemetery just beyond the house, you know. Them and Malone, both. The dogs would attack her house? It's like they don't want anybody but Malone living there. I guess they don't know he's dead. And so are they. Did they ever attack Sally? She never gave them the chance. After the first attack, she stopped going out at night. Just locked the doors when it got dark and sat tight until morning. Why haven't the police investigated? This isn't New York City, Miss Nancy Drew. All they got around here is one officious little park ranger. And all Jeff <laughs> Akers does is sit around all day trying to figure out how he can get himself transferred out of here to a bigger park. Do you live close by? I just come to Moon Lake in the spring to look for birds. Got an observation platform just up the path, kind of my base camp, 
and I've got a little outboard down there on the lake. Left my car at the big dock up lake. Don't really need it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Right. Are those the ghost dogs? Yes, ma'am. Which is why I think it would be a good idea if I went my merry way and you got yourself back inside that house. Good luck, Miss Nancy Drew. Okay, we better get inside. It's getting dark. I mean, it is dark. It's getting spooky what in the is dark. <laughs> what is this, seven days to die? Go explore. Yep. Bark, bark, bark. This is Let's open up the good. door. Let him in. <gasps> See, this would have been a perfect run how many times. Yep. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, that's just great. <laughs> oh, come on, it's just a good dog. Go like to bed. Bed. I'm going to bed. Oh. It's like oh, man. <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is take some water because, man, what a night. Get dead tree cut down. Well, it's already That's down, nice. sister. It's already down. I'm investigating. Thought you could use this map. You'll find lots of. Ooh! Oh, I should probably take a picture of this. It's a map. It's a map. It's a map. It's the map. It's the map. Are you just. Are you going all Dora Explorer? <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just making. Trying to make stupid jokes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Rubber gloves? Let's yes. take everything in the house. Let's just take everything. You never know what we'll need. Oh, this is the note we didn't read. Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll call you from hate. my... Oh, she called us from her car. That was yeah. the whole car thing. Yeah. Why did you I didn't think... know? Yeah, I thought it was Nancy that was waiting for the car. Oh, no. No, I told you. <laughs> she said she was going to call, call Nancy from the car. Yep, don't don't ask me why I got that just don't. Leaves that appear on a fresh spring tree make my birth different from the other three. When swans drift by on shimmering blue, I'm the one who plays in the summer dew. When autumn's call brings out the deer, it is I who howls on mornings clear. And when winter comes and birds take flight, look to me to sleep through the long gray night. I always thought that was pretty. Right. Some kind of poem, but it's also more critical, I think. Probably gonna be important. Rotten floorboards, watch your Uh-oh, <laughs> she dead. Uh well that's the end of the game, everyone. Thank yeah. you so much for watching. So it, ends. it wasn't the dogs. <laughs> it was just the floor and the trap that they laid for you. Oh man. <sighs> Well, just go read that sign. Very safe. I'm not gonna go read that. Just go read it. No, I don't want to. You should. Looks like it could be art. That's a puzzle for later. I don't. I mean, I don't think I use it yet. Fight it. I need some sandpaper. Yep. Some popper. Well, let's call people. Yes. Yes. Let's call Sally. Now that we've been through a terrible night. Yes. Oh, come on. No, just good dog moves like Shiloh. Hey, Sally, it's Nancy. Nancy, did you see them? Did you see the dogs? Yes, I did, and I can understand why you left. They were pretty frightening. 
But if it's okay with you, I'd really like to stay and get to the bottom of whatever is going on. That's why you asked me here in the first place, right? Yeah, but Nancy, are you sure? Positive. Consider Detective Drew officially on the case. I wish I were even half the trooper you are, Nancy. Oh, I have such high hopes for that house. All the beauty there, the wildlife, all the pictures I was going to take. It would break my heart to have to give it up. I need you to tell me everything you can about those dogs. They're black, and they have yellow glowing eyes, and they don't like me one bit. When's the first time you saw them? Well, let's see. I heard them the very first night I was here. I heard them almost every night, howling in the distance. But I didn't actually see them until I'd been here about a week. After that, they started appearing pretty much every other night. When they appeared, did they always do the same thing? Yes, come to think of it. They always came running up to the house, barking and snarling. They'd lunge at the windows, they'd jump up on the door, they'd run around and bark some more, then they'd run off. What are you getting at? These attacks seem to involve a lot of choreography, which reinforces my theory that you're not being randomly attacked by a pack of wild dogs, but by dogs who've been trained by someone determined to scare you out of your house at Moon Lake. Who would want to do that? My closest neighbor lives two miles away. My property is surrounded by the state park, but it's off-season, so hardly anybody is in the park. In fact, I bet I talked to a total of three people the whole four weeks I was at Moon Lake. Which three people? Let's see. The park ranger. I forget his name. Kind of a pain in the neck. Emily Griffin. She's the one who owns that store I told you about. And I ran into this bird watcher a couple of times. Had a funny name. Red Knot. I run into him, too. Other than people I may have nodded hello to while getting gas or something, I swear those are the only people I've talked to at Moon Lake. What about River Heights? Can you think of anyone there who'd want you to sell your house at Moon Lake and move back to River Heights? <laughs> you mean like an angry ex-boyfriend or something? Nope, I sure can't. Since I'm going to be staying here a while, is there anything I should know about the place? Well, let's see. I've got the water turned off because it's well water and it needs to be tested before I can use it for anything. In fact, if you could get that testing done for me, I'd really appreciate it. Oh, and watch where you walk in the living room. Some of the floorboards are so rotten you could fall right through. Oh, really? You don't say. You don't say. noises coming from below the floor. I hope you're not scared of mice. I could really use some sandpaper. Do you have any stashed away somewhere? Sure don't. Try M's Emporium. That's on the west side of the lake, and brace yourself if you haven't been there yet. The place is something else. How well do you know the owner? I feel like I've known her all my life. She's so open and friendly. She likes to make it sound as if Moon Lake used to be a major hangout for criminals and degenerates, which isn't really true and irks some people around here no end. But I figure she's just trying to make a buck. How do I go about getting your water tested? Try the ranger station on the east side of the lake. I've been told you can get some kind of kit there. I'm curious. Why did you characterize the park ranger as a pain in the neck? I left part of a ham sandwich on a picnic table once. Big mistake. From the way he carried on, you'd think I just made the FBI's 10 most wanted list. I don't think he likes me. Emily says it's because I wrecked his dream of becoming super ranger or something when I bought the Malone house instead of the parks department. Me? I think he just basically has a problem relating to people unless they're asking questions or breaking the law. The wall hanging in the living room with a poem on it, and those dog carvings in that cabinet above the sofa. What can you tell me about them? Aren't they cool? They came with the place. Sold the clock. Apparently, Malone had them custom made when he built the house. In fact, they're all built into the house. They're still there because you can't move them. Has the clock ever worked? Not for me. Oh, but get this. One day, I was messing with the hands, you know, trying to get them to work, and all of a sudden, one of the four little doors flew open, and instead of a cuckoo, this dog popped out and barked three times. It's a doggy clock! That Malone, bad as he was, he sure loved those dogs. <laughs> Talk to you later! Keep me yeah, we saw the... Kind of I know. Let's call my best friend! Man, for sure getting less and less people to call I as know. these games go on. I know. The boyfriend's gone. He's coming back? Nancy, how's it going? Hey, Bess. How'd you know it was me? Telepathy, of course. Just another of my many talents. You are so full of it. 
she got caller ID, Nancy. So now, instead of hanging up on the geeks that always call her, she just doesn't answer the phone. Very funny. So what's up? I could sure use a nice big hint right about now. Oh, wow, at the top. With a boat, you could really do some exploring. Sally said you could use hers. Go for okay, it. Okay, so they want me to go drive around. Okay. Believe it or not, on some nights, this house gets attacked by a pack of dogs. Sally's so scared of them, she left me here by myself. Did you say dogs? She couldn't have, George. Dogs don't attack houses. They were definitely dogs. They came out of nowhere and started leaping at the windows and scratching at the doors like they wanted to get in. Maybe that was just their way of being friendly. Mm. These dogs were not friendly, believe me. And they had glowing yellow eyes. A bird watcher I ran into said they were ghosts. Ghosts? The man who built Sally's place on Moon Lake was a gangster. The bird watcher said that the ghosts of his dogs show up every time someone new tries to live here. The place is haunted by ghost dogs? Like there's such a thing as ghosts. But it does sound like you've got another mystery on your hands, Detective Drew. Bye, you guys. Ta-ta. Ciao for now. Okay. You really must have love if they considered they knew that you had a boat to go across the lake on. We never even said like, we said like two sentences to them. I know. <laughs> I know. So that leads to the forest. This is the water. We can't Yay. really do Looks anything. Like paw prints. Ooh. Paw prints. I like this song. And now to the haunt, to the haunted forest. That's on the other side of the house. This is Red's observation deck. This must be Red's observation platform. He's only there at night, so we're not going to see him right now. But we're going to get in our night, little... There's dogs. So, like, how are you supposed to... Hmm. We're supposed to do this. Yay. The we're probably going to get stuck on the middle of the lake. I need to oh. bail out the boat. Oh. Okay. Or not quite yet. There we go. Hear them mosquitoes out there. Yep. Trying to get that Zika. Oh wait, it's 2002. Never mind. Oh, wrench. Or not wrench, a screwdriver. Yeah, oh, wrench, Sonny! I don't know why I said a branch is a screwdriver. What's going the on? spark plug is missing. What? Uh. 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 Spark plug is The now. spark plug is missing. Dang it. I can't go anywhere until I get a spark plug. Well, you know what this means. Oh, you means. got a car. Give up. Yep. I'm going to bed. Night. Really? Yep. That's the solution? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just sleep the whole day. No, 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 no. The moon's so bright, I won't need my flashlight. You're silly. Do you not remember someone else has a boat, yes, too? I know. I know. I know. It was a joke. Well, it's Miss Nancy Drew. Please, just call me Nancy. I will if you keep your voice down. I just heard a cerulean warbler. Really? Are they rare? Something tells me they're gonna be with you around. You didn't come up here to chit-chat, did you? Do you know much about outboard motors? Sure do. Only type of motorized vehicle that's allowed on Moon Lake. Heck, if it were up to me, I'd ban them too. Have everybody get around by canoe. Nothing like the threat of physical activity to keep tourists away. Why don't you like tourists? I came to see birds, not people. The more people there are in a forest, the fewer birds there are. It's a fact of life. The reason I like to come here is because nobody else does. It's perfect. Not a decent grocery store, restaurant, or motel for miles. There's no place nearby that sells boat parts? Sally's outboard is missing a spark plug. I might be able to help you out. After all, I was a Boy Scout. Be prepared. 
You mean you have a spark plug I could buy? Well, just so happens I've got two spark plugs right here in my pocket. Ooh. Question is, if I give you one, what do I get for it? Really? I don't need cash, but maybe you could take a few pictures for me. Cool. Know how to use a digital camera? Sure. Sure. What would you like me to take pictures of? Birds, of course. There's a couple of birds I'm supposed to take pictures of for Pepsob. That's people for the preservation and study of birds. I thought it was people that you cried. Can recognize them by their songs. <laughs> Picture on this tape, which you can play on my cassette player, which you're gonna have to get from M's Emporium as soon as you get your boat fixed. <laughs> Think you can handle that? I know I can, sir. I know I can. Here's everything you'll need. Thank you. M's Emporium is up lake on the west side. Not that I'm trying to get you out of my hair or anything. Yeah, you but are. Try not to come pestering me till you're done, okay? One more thing. You smoke? Yes. Cigarettes? No. <laughs> These woods may not look it, but they're tinder dry. One lit match. And the best bird habitat on the east coast will go up in smoke. I don't smoke, so by the way. That's do. a joke. Because if anything don't like smoke, that happens, people. I won't be looking for birds anymore. I'll be looking for you. Watch yourself out there. Well, we got what we needed. Yeah. We're just gonna have to go on a very boring bird hunt, that's all. But at least we can get around. Yay, uh, we didn't want to go visit the dogs. No. Mm, but I like dogs. Okay, stick around till the <laughs> end of the game. Maybe you'll see some. <laughs> The spark plug is missing. We know, dancing room. wrong with this engine. I think I did it wrong. Okay, let's try that. That ought to do it. All right, we're yeah. in business. Let's go to the ranger station first. Ah, uh, yes. Where we're not supposed to be. We're not supposed to be at the ranger station. Well, I mean, you're supposed to go to Amazon Emporium, but I'm just joking. I'm just joking. We need to get a water testing kit. Just joshing. Just joshing around. You're just joshing? Yes. You're not sunnying. Nope. Welcome to Moon Lake State Park! Skunks! Hey, I have a friend who for some reason has decided that their favorite animal is a skunk. Your friend is weird. But okay. You must be at least 16 years old to go fishing. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, some places have regulations on allowing you to fish. Which is weird since I've been fishing since I was like... I don't know, six, seven. Using nets or snagging? Oh, it's prohibited. Hmm. So many regulations. Yeah, the Ace and Horse Power one is more about sound than anything. Mm hmm. Keep pets yeah. leashed. Uh oh. Those yeah, dogs. they don't. Yeah, it's weird, but like. Yeah, you really do want. To, when you're in natural areas, you, really you really do want to clean after your pets for safety of the environment. Okay. 
You know you can tell how old a tree is by counting the rings. That's how old you know a tree is. I always thought that was so cool. Slow mate. Mm -hmm. Oh well, it's more like the uh, all those things about like infections or infestation by insects and all that stuff. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, poison ivy. Oh boy. Hey, that Remember looks like your up. eye. Kind of, actually. <laughs> Doesn't that look like this could kind be a picture of. of your face a little bit? I... <laughs> With just the eyes, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm very sensitive to poison ivy. I used to get uh, rashes a lot from it when I was at my grandma's house because my grandma used to live up in the mountains. Mm. Yeah. I go like play around in the pro play around like the uh, nature side of the property. I used to get that a lot. Guys, you learned the secret. Sunny was a cameo in this Nancy Drew game. He had to send Wait, a photo. This is 2002. I was like seven. <laughs> We get to learn about all these things better than the mind culture, right? We get to learn about as long as rashes it need and... To be for the, as long as it doesn't need to be used for the puzzles. And we have to cross-reference stuff a bunch. No. Do you have fatigue, fever, or muscle aches? Because you might yeah. have a terrible, terrible disease. Headaches, chills, abdominal problems. Uh, yeah, this part is probably important since there might be mice inside the house. Yes, yeah, so don't sweep in the basement. You gotta wear a face mask and rubber gloves. Move dirt from the area with a damp towel, mop, or sponge. Beaver fever. Nancy Drew. I'm visiting Sally McDonald. Are you the park ranger? Park ranger Jeff Akers, at your service. Let's see. Sally McDonald is the woman who bought the old Malone place. You're right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Only she's gone back to Philadelphia. Malone's dogs got to her. Don't tell me she believes all that ghost dog stuff. Does that mean you don't? There's always a logical explanation for everything. Whatever's out there, I'm sure they're no more and no less than exactly what they look and sound like. Dogs. Living, breathing, very noisy dogs. Yeah. Well? Why do you think dogs would attack Sally's house? Dogs can be trained to do almost anything. Mm -hmm. Any idea what would make a dog's eyes glow Guessing. yellow? Something in their diet, maybe? Some oddball vitamin or protein. As a park ranger, don't you want to know for sure what's behind these dog attacks? Do you always ask this many questions? Yes. As a matter of fact, I do. I'm a very busy man, Ms. Drew, but... I am here to serve the public. Do you have something I could use to test the well water at Sally's? Sure do. Simple to use, too. Just pump some water into this vial, return the sample to me, I'll send it off, and in a day or two you'll find out whether or not your water's fit to drink. Okay. Well, if there's some kind of toxin, toxin water, just make the dogs go nuts. Does everyone out here have a well? <laughs> Everyone who doesn't want to die of thirst does. 
Hooking up to a municipal water supply is out of the question. Too expensive. This place isn't exactly your ordinary ranger station, is it? It's also the Moon Lake Post Office, and it's the unofficial Moon Lake Museum of Factual and Natural History. I've lived here all my life, so I can't help but feel obligated to protect not only the area's flora and fauna, but also its past. Which is apparently rather colorful. As a member of the law enforcement community, I prefer to dwell on the positive aspects of history instead of on the activities of a bunch of glorified thugs. So you'd probably like to see the old Malone place torn down and forgotten. Not necessarily. It's hard to ignore its potential as a tourist attraction. And if that's what it takes to draw more people to Moon Lake, hmm, I'm a reasonable man. As an officer of the law, can you think of anyone who might want to scare Sally off her property? The woman who owns the shop across the lake? Emily Griffin? I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure she's been dragging the lake in front of Malone's house for artifacts, which is illegal. It would be a lot easier for her to do her dirty work if nobody was living there. Mm. Would it be okay if I Turn the door under the bus. Please do. And if you have no. any questions, any more questions, no. just ask. Would you mind mailing this letter for me? Not at all. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Oh, and one last thing. The deer mouse population has boomed this year, so please take precautions if you're cleaning out any area where they may have nested. They can carry some nasty diseases. Thanks for the tip, Ranger Acres. Okay. We got our water testing kit. Yeah, there's a computer. Civilian Conservation Corp. in 1932 in the United States was another. <laughs> is, that your, is that your impression of like a 40s or 50s uh, documentarian <laughs> voice? Uh, yeah. In 1932, when the United States was in the throes of the Great Depression, presidential candidate Franklin D. Roosevelt. Resic recognized that the country was facing two very serious problems. Its natural resources were rapidly being destroyed by soil erosion and deforestation, and thousands of able-bodied men were unemployed and desperately looking for work. Oh, that's... I had to stutter. Part two! So when he was elected, Roosevelt immediately compelled Congress to pass the Emergency Conservation Work Act. It called for the establishment of a peace time army of men who stationed at various camps throughout the country would undertake work prospects that would save and revitalize the nation's forests while allowing the men to earn much needed paychecks. Nice. Computer! Hello. Computer. Health and safety. Can I play Doom on this thing? Yeah. <laughs> This is actual real facts that teaches you yep. things.
like you gotta prime the pump before you do the test. Which I know how to do. Oh, this is about the viruses we were reading about. See Drew attempts to clean up an area without the proper protection. Do we get to see her experiencing these symptoms throughout the gameplay? <laughs> I'm just curious how well they thought how well they thought out this game. And sure they probably just won't let her do it. Like without the protective gear, huh? Mm -hmm. think we need this for any puzzles i'm just i mean if you clean if you're gonna end up cleaning up that area mm -hmm. um that she asked or that um is in the basement i think or if you're gonna be entering the basement mm -hmm. you probably need the protective gear i think which is part of why you got the rubber gloves yeah that's that's probably yeah uh, very very uh observant of you sunny that is exactly why we have them because I imagine we're eventually going in the basement. Yeah, why would there be one if we couldn't go in it, right? The history of Moon Lake. If you really want to know. I can't, if you're, I can't tell if you're trying to, like, roast me right now or not. <laughs> what about? About being um, observant about the gloves? Yeah. No, I'm telling you the truth. We will need to use them for uh -huh. that. I'm not, uh -huh. I'm not roasting you on a Let's Play like that. I'm going to be the... I, I... <laughs> That sounds like something you would do. I do. Well, I'm not roasting you right now. <laughs> oh, look, there's one of the dogs. You roasted me on stream before. That's different. That's in front of a live audience. This is pre recorded. Are we in front of a live audience now? <laughs> true, true. We have the disc. You're right. Anyways, stay focused, Sunny. You already lost me. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Roman, Roman numerals. Roman numerals. This will come in handy. Okay, I've actually never... I can actually never remember what, like, the L and the C is in the end of actually. Meant. They are hard. Jeff Eggers. Oh. He has his own little pages and he wow, just... Wow, he has all these, his own... A Wiki little page. page. Just ask. <laughs> oh. No. Uh, he made his own little wiki page on the computer. On the only computer here. Sunny in the wild. Yep, yeah, that's what I look like, y'all. Vic, watching over the beehive. Yep. Me. Me again. <laughs> Still me. <laughs> Another one of me. Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> <Glow worm. laughs> there right. is your roast, Sonny. <laughs> hey, man, glow worms. You got cool. roasted for accusing me of roasting you. How do you like it? Glow worms are cool, so that's not a roast. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna go get a water sample real quick before I forget. So I think I think I remember how to do it. Prime the pump. There we go. Pump has been primed. This Test. doesn't smell like sulfur. This smells like ash. Where have I this heard that? Connect, this, this must be connected to the serenity, to the serenity pump. Oh! Oh, <laughs> why? You know why. 
Because you're a goober. <laughs> you're back. I have that water sample. What do I do with it? Just give it to me, and I'll take care of it. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Okay, we got that done. We got that done. Now I can go visit M. Every time I say M, it reminds me of my niece. Shout out to my niece. If you ever watch this, Aunt Kristen loves you. And if you don't watch this, I'll tell you to go watch it so then you can hear me say I love you. <laughs> Benson Aviation. Millie gets you there. Skunk Xing. We gotta X out all the skunks. Yeah, we gotta cross them out. My friend will not be happy about that. Seriously, she said she wanted a, a pet skunk. <laughs> Something's wrong with that. No. Hey, fish and worms. Apparently Nancy's not amused. Coco Kringle! Shout out to Coco Kringle right hey, there! Hey, Coco Kringles, <laughs> are you chasing after weird aliens? Are you chasing after aliens in, in my civilization? Or is your house being attacked by dogs? Well, Coco Kringles is candy for you. Hey there! Welcome to M's Emporium. I'm Emily Griffin. My name's Nancy Drew. I'm staying out at the old Malone place. You know, the house Sally McDonald bought? Now what's she doing inviting guests out to that old dump? She's got a little problem she's hoping I can solve. But right now, I need a chainsaw. A chainsaw? <laughs> A tree fell down the driveway behind my car, and now I'm blocked in. I'll get Tucker Davis to take care of it. Gotta warn you, though. Tucker tends to do things in his own sweet time. So how come Sally ain't with you? The ghost dog scared her off. I told her. I said, Sally, that old house is gonna be nothing but trouble. And sure enough, Malone's hounds have come back. Just when we all thought they were finally resting in peace. Have you ever seen the dogs? Nope. Don't want to, neither. Just hearing them howl's bad enough. Scares the bejeebies out of me. When was the last time they Believe appeared? Us. Seems like they show up every time somebody buys the place. So the last time would have been a 10, 15 years ago. I caught a strange man prowling around last night. He called himself Red Knot. The bird watcher comes in every so often to stock up on that weirdo food he eats. You know how them tree hugger types are. It seemed to me that he was more into watching birds than hugging trees. Yeah, well, whatever. One thing's for sure, he's gonna wind up with a dose of buckshot in his hind end if he keeps tramping through people's yards making noises like he just popped out of a UFO. Mr. Knott did me a favor, mm. and in return he asked me to UFO. pick up a cassette player from you. Oh yeah, I got it right here. Thought maybe the old coot had forgotten he left it here. What else can I do you, you for? I have to click on her thumb. Where do you find your... Achoo! Bless you. Uh -oh. It's all the dust. Sometimes I think it grows on this stuff. Some of those old bottles are beautiful. Where'd you get them? Found them. See, back in the days of Prohibition, that old Malone place used to be Party Central. Only way to get to and from back then was by boat. And when those boats dumped, on account of bad weather or bad driving or the feds suddenly showing up, while well, everything from diamond necklaces to full bottles of illegal booze sank to the bottom of the lake. So it's finders keepers, huh? That's right. See, recovering objects from the lake bed is illegal. According to Squeaky Wheel Acres, dragging the lake for artifacts was upsetting its delicate eco-balance. So thanks mostly to his constant squawking, the state banned it. Are you saying you acquired this stuff illegally? Well, of course not. It all washed up on shore. Sounds like you aren't real fond of Ranger Acres. Jeff Acres could take all his precious rules and regulations and take a flying leap. Now, I got nothing mm. against getting more customers in here, mind you. But I kind of like Moon Lake the way it is. Small, quiet, out of the way. But Jeff Acres. Why, there's nothing he'd like better than to see all the lake and all the property around it turned into one big, noisy, jam-packed state park. 
why would he want that? He's the type of guy who likes to boss people around, makes them feel important. So if the park got way bigger and was crawling with tourists, why instead of giving out maybe one ticket for littering every two days, he'd be giving out one dozen tickets every two hours. He'd be in heaven. Well, hey, I'm sure you got better things to do than getting your ear chewed off by yours truly. I need to buy something. You want it? I got it. As long as you pay cash, that is. That's just it. I'm running kind of low on cash. Would it be possible to start a line of credit? My daddy always said, neither a borrower nor a lender be. But I'll tell you what, seeing as how you're a friend of Sally's, and seeing as how I got some things around here that could use doing, I guess we could work something out. What is it you need? Do you sell sandpaper by any chance? I do, but Mr. Birdbrain was in last week and cleaned me out. Then he was tired of that observation platform of his giving him splinters in his hinter regions. <laughs> Think I could get some from him? <laughs> He's your only hope. But you better ask him for it quick. That deck of his is pretty big, and those squares I sold him are pretty small. Guess I'll see you later. Yola, hee hoo. And don't let the turkeys get you down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy. Okay, well, I think we're going to want to ask him for um, sandpaper, but I don't know if he'll give it to us until we do his bird thing. Probably not. So, let's listen to this. Can we put the tape in? American Goldfinch. Northern Cardinal. Red-tailed hawk. Western tanager. Okay, that was about. Was that four or five different calls we heard? I think like four. Four. Which one do we need to listen to? All of them. I think we need all of them. Yeah. So we better get started. Did you sleep peacefully? I slept Did you amazing. The dog. You know, the dog attacks. They stopped showing the dogs after that first night, if you haven't noticed. Lame. I guess you just have to Lame. imagine every night Nancy has to deal with it. Lame. It would be actually cooler if they did. Lame. How am I supposed to be convinced that Sally got scared out of here? Who knows? It's locked. Unless she didn't, or she gets scared out of there. Can I... Just, you know, a face only a gnome could it. love. Ooh, got a key. What if it goes to this? Oh, the key broke off. Oh, nice. there's got to be another way to get this open. Oh, Ooh, a ball peen hammer. And but I'm actually not sure what the- oh, face mask. So, we got everything we needed here. Okay. This means we can check out the basement. When we're done looking for birds! Don't you need to give that water sample over to- We already did. We already did. Oh, you did? I must know I've not paid attention. Okay. Yeah, that's why we went there. Bus. No birds here. Got some wood, uh, though. Those look too rotten. Okay, well, I hope that works. I need some more. You 
can get lost here. It's not fun. Okay, got a goldfinch hawk or Yay. goldfinch. So that was nice. Where are all the birds? Are some of them only uh, at night? Possibly. Okay. Maybe we have to come back at night. I don't know. Tweet, tweet! <laughs> hey, it's Maya's shoe! Shoe. Yeah, remember from... Remember from yeah, the... yeah. <laughs> it's like, 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 that's interesting. They obviously meant that for, meant for that to be significant. Believe it or not, it has nothing to do with the game. I thought for the longest time it was a clue. It's not. It's, it's a marker. It's just supposed to help you mm. with where you are. Ooh, ooh, ooh. scared it. Aww. Some of these birds are really hard to get. Ah. Cemetery. Waldo, where is he? Hey, we found him. <laughs> <laughs> you waited so long for him to be found, he died. Piece of wood. So goodness and goodness. Goodness. Mm -mm. Stench. Marbles, we're so sorry. That's a cat. <laughs> See? Yeah. Alright. This is important. These are the four dogs that Mickey Malone yep. had. This is Vetus. And I need to uh, write down their names. And when they were born. So Vetus was born February. February 8th, 1924. Xander. Name's the dog Xander. Was born August. 16th. 1923. Who names the dog Vetus? Lucy, my favorite. Who needs a dog Lucy? I'm kidding. 
Gee, who names a dog Roxy? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't name that dog. Oh. She was born in 1922. No, Roxy was born. I'm Roxy talking was... about Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Iggy. Oh, I liked Iggy. Iggy was Iggy. my favorite. Iggy. He was the quiet dog on the porch. Iggy. November. Just some JoJo's Bizarre Adventures 11. references you can He's make out of this. He's the oldest. He was born in 1919. These look like dog tracks. So great. Well, can't open it. Was it the dogs or was it dog shaped human hands? <laughs> dog. Dog. I'm not even going to. This bird yeah, is. Yeah, don't just... validate it. Don't validate what I said. <laughs> I'm not even gonna deal. Just wanna get out of here. Okay. So there's some birds we're scaring away. We'll have to talk to Red about that. But for now, I wanna work on this. Get the there nails. We go, now we can look at this. Yay! Now we're gonna read a sign that warned us about it. Got some placement there, Sally. Okay. Okay, now I have to keep an eye on the poem. Okay, first one is spring. Second is summer. Third is autumn. And the fourth is winter. The, the birthdays of the dogs and the order of the seasons are very important. Yeah, I'll say this much. So, for example, we have no um, sandpaper yet. That's the thing. So we can't really do the puzzle yet. But I have the notes. So we're gonna go talk to Red and tell him, Red, we're having some problems with your birds. On doggers. Find all the birds? I found some birds, but no matter how quiet I am, I've been scaring other birds away before I can take their picture. What am I doing wrong? You're wearing those clothes. That's what you're doing wrong. You need to blend in, like me. Go back over to M's tacky tourist trap and get yourself some camouflage gear. <laughs> Only sensible thing that money grubber carries. I'm sorry to keep bugging you, but I need some sandpaper. Emily said you might have some. Here. Take it and scram. I was just about to call in a meadowlark. That was always Ruth's favorite. Was Ruth your wife? Good heavens no. My wife had no patience for birding. Ruth was my dog. Border Collie. She'd hear a meadowlark and by golly, her ears would perk and she'd cock her head and she'd just come as close to smiling as ever a dog could. <laughs> Do many people around here own dogs? Not really. Most people don't bother. The place is surrounded by park land, and Ranger Acres just loves enforcing the leash laws. There it is again. Take your sandpaper and go... sand something, okay? Okay. Sonny, oh. I'm gonna sand you. That sounds real. No, don't. <laughs> yes. Do it. Okay. I'm gonna save the game. Um. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, from, it's, like, it's phonetically accurate now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, now we can work on that puzzle. Hooray. Because red did not make us do anything for the sandpaper. It's stuck. I know. I'm trying to... There. Okay, Vetus. Okay. Oh, Let's see where Vetus is. Okay, so Vetus is this one. Okay. Vetus would be... February 8th. Hmm. November would be autumn. Yeah. November would be autumn. Unless you're in the South Pole. Or southern hemisphere, rather. Don't overcomplicate, Sonny. February would be winter. August would be summer. And Lucy would be spring. Okay, so Vetus needs to be winter. So we need to keep messing with Vetus. That would be spring. That looks like that would be autumn. And but I will go double check. I will go look and see what the poem said winter was. According to the details. When the birds take flight. Okay, so we need to set Vetus to birds. You're correct. Vetus is birds. Okay, who's next? Next is Iggy. Iggy is autumn. According to the poem, Wiggy Iggy. <laughs> Autumn is the deers. I think he's in the correct position for deer, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't care about you. There. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Next is Lucy. Lucy is spring, and I think the spring would be the, uh, the trees. Okay, the trees. Oh, yeah, of course, I have to fix the last dog. There we go. Oh. Is that sound? What? What is 
that? Um. Hmm, it could be mice making that sound. Yeah. It looks like a tiny hole. What's the combination? Oh, I don't know. I do not know. One, two, three, four. It's one, two, three, four. Pinch. Mickey Malone pinched. Oh! That might be when he died or something. Yeah. Was there anything about him on the computer that said anything when he died? I would bet. I would bet there is. Oh, I don't know when he died. I assume that's what pinch means, right? Oh, yeah, that would be what pinch means. Was there a date on the graveyard? William Akers? I wonder if he's related to Jeff Akers. Huh? Well, it's told by his most entrusted employee, William Akers. So mom never spent the night in jail and he never will, so William Akers. And you know why? Because he because he's just an ordinary <laughs> Joe running uh -huh. just, just uh, sorry. Because he's just an ordinary Joe trying to run and was talking to the man who, according to the police, is the only person Malone trusts. I'm trying to sound like a gangster. Sorry. I like it. I like it. Keep going. Keep going. Can you read the rest like that? All right. I all oh, know. I see him every day. He went off. He doesn't deserve all the greedy newspaper hacks given. <laughs> He's a rich man because his laundromats are fine establishments and people like to wash their clothes there. All this talk about him being a bootlegger is just plain hogwash. Oh, you didn't read the <laughs> bottom of this. That's why I was confused. I was confused like, about the about the <laughs> structure of that sentence right there. Uh, all right. He said this with such conviction that for a moment, this reporter honestly thought Akers was talking about somebody other than Mickey Malone, the notorious gangster. But I was standing on the porch of Malone's getaway home in Moon Lake, having but but bushwhack through the thick brush from the east side of the lake to avoid detection and probably improbable eviction by his bodyguards and i and i you said was talking this. to the man i was i was really confused about the sentence structure i taught when i was reading okay. this sorry so plain hogwash so pick back up here so um, when I asked if I could talk to Malone, Maker said Malone was out walking. Like I said, he's an ordinary guy who likes to do ordinary things. When I asked if I could wait for him, he said, What for? Anything you want to know about Mickey Malone, all I can tell you is I've worked, <laughs> I've worked for him for 15 years. When I said all I want, when, when I said all I wanted was the truth, he said, Then you're in luck, because that's what I just told you. And now I suggest you leave. Mickey's a swell guy, but he's got these four big dogs, see, and sometimes they don't mind so good. I took the hint and left, but as I struggled through the brush to get back to my car, I realized something. Akers hadn't told me the truth about what Mickey Malone did. I knew that, but he had told me an important truth when he came to what Mickey Malone was. Someone who, at the least, won... Someone who had at least one extremely loyal employee. I ask you, good citizens of Philadelphia, how many so-called legitimate businessmen can say the same thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, Houdini! Reflections on Houdini, Master Magician, eight. That's 20, a callback. That's a callback to the final scene game. Yep. Now, I noticed the date on this piece of paper was 1927, and I just wonder if that could be what it meant by pinched. I don't know. Maybe. No? Well, it's worth a 
could try. I don't think we have everything. It's okay. We'll come back. We'll come back. We'll just go up through here. Because we can. Uh, let's go to bed. Because we need to go stop by the ranger station and try to get some camouflage. <laughs> Tell you, son, as you got a good gangsta voice. Alrighty. You're back. What do you know about the cemetery behind the Malone house? People are buried there. Beyond that, what's to know? Is Malone buried there? That's the rumor. The inscription on one of the tombstones reads Waldo Matthias. Does that name ring any bells? Not in my steeple. Hmm. Oh, we're gonna tell him about the paper. I found a newspaper dating back to 1927 in Sally's house. Since you're kind of an expert on the history of Moon Lake, do you mind if I ask you some questions about Mickey Malone? Not at all. The article mentioned that a man named William Akers used to work for Malone. Is he a relative of yours? No. Quite a coincidence, I'll admit, but no. I am in no way related to the head flunky of some two-bit gangster and his gang of thugs. I found this old picture in Sally's house. Do you know who these people are? The man is Mickey Malone, I know that. I'm guessing that this is his girlfriend. Vivian Burnett, I think her name was. And judging by the year of that brand new Ford in the background, I'd say the picture was taken in 1928. Hmm. She was probably as familiar with Malone's house and his dogs as he was. Think there's any chance she's still alive? Tell you what, Miss Drew. Why don't I go through my files and see what I can dig up on this mystery woman? I'm a busy man, but like I always say, I'm here to serve. When and why was Malone arrested? I'm sorry, Miss Drew. As usual, I'm a little pressed for time. If you have more questions, why don't you sit down at the computer and peruse the Moon Lake database of fascinating factoids that I've put together? What happened to Akers and the rest of Malone's gang after he went to prison? <laughs> Fortunately for Moon Lake, they all left and went their separate ways. Have you gotten the results back from that water sample I left with you? I meant to call the Department of Health today for a status report, but frankly, uh, really? I've been way too busy. Sounds like Moon Lake could use Dang. two rangers. If I were in charge of just 10 more acres of parkland, they'd give me an assistant, and I could devote more time to the acquisition of more land and eventually put Moon Lake on the map as one of the biggest, most popular parks in the state. Why didn't the Parks Department buy the Malone property instead of Sally? She outbid them, the cheapskates. Well, if those dogs scare Sally away for good, other people are bound to think twice about buying the place. The bank will lower its price, and you'll have your land. You're insinuating things again, Miss Drew. I'm sorry, I really am. It's just that Sally's my friend, and I'd really like to find out why someone's doing this to her. Tell you what, if you're serious about making amends, there's some boxes by the computer labeled with dates. They're from the estate of a local history buff. She kept everything from newspaper clippings to old photos to recipes for apple crisp. She put everything in envelopes, then numbered them by year using Roman numerals. Just put the envelopes in order by year with the earliest date in front. Oh, and if you're rusty on Roman numerals, there's an entry on them in the computer. Okay. Okay if I read what's in the envelopes? Don't go reading anything until you're through, or take my word for it. You'll never get finished. <laughs> I've been trying to take pictures of birds for this guy named Red Knot. Ever met him? Oh yes, the bird man. I'd stay away from him if I were you. Why? Is something wrong with him? He's a fanatic. He's got it in his head that Moon Lake would be the best bird watching venue in the world except for one thing. Too many people. Believe me, if there was a way to get this park shut down and all the homes on the lake torn down, He'd do it in an instant. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Okay, 
Sounds like a trap well, door. Well, looky What's here. There? It's a doggo, a border collie. Doggo. Interesting. We're gonna need something. Yeah, it's not border collie. That's not a border collie, my bad. I don't know why I thought it was a border collie. What am I? I can't find it! What looking for? I was looking for the thing on Roman numerals. Where did we see that? Was it um, on the computer? It was on the computer. Right oh, there! Oh. All right. I'm gonna take a pick. We're gonna need it. Okay. Maybe I'll take a picture of this too since it's giving us free examples. Never know. Do some organizing. Sure. Cool. All right, Sonny, get to it. Let's see. Jeff said oh, sorry, my hands are tied. Literally. Date goes down in the front of each box. Okay, so the earliest date goes down in the front of each box. I am already confused. Well, I gotta figure out which one of these is, uh, is between 1900 and 1912. Oh. Uh. You got that reference page, right? Yeah. CM seems to be at the start of all of these. Seems like it. So, yeah. MCM would probably be the earliest one. Okay. Because then this would be a 10. This would be a 4. Yeah, this would be 4. So we just keep looking. Okay, so this is four. This is eight. This is ten. This is eleven. This is thirteen. This is fourteen. Uh, this would be next. This is uh, seventeen. No, 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 no. This would be next. This is 15. This is, uh, this is 17. This is 19. Um, I think? Right? Yeah, yeah. This... Oh my gosh, I'm getting so confused. Okay, let me look at these one more time. Okay, so 13, 14, 15, 17, 19, 20, 19. Okay, so these two rows are correct. MCM X. 
MCML, no, that's the 30s. L, L, I don't like this L stuff. Okay, XX is 25. Now that they're all sorted, I, I what? can do some nah. reading. All right, dope. Uh, you did it. All done. Okay. Yeah, GG. Thanks. GG. Let's do some reading. Okay, so where is nothing to read between 1900 and 1919 here? Let's see what's in this. 1925. Is Gangster about to become Moon Lake's newest resident? 1925. I think we're going to find the year for Malone getting pinched in these articles somewhere. You got put on nice. I'm gonna write these down. Moved in. 25. You ready to read? Rumors are, rumors are flying thick and fast. Mickey Malone, a self proclaimed the captain of industry with far more ties to gamblers and smugglers than legitimate businessmen, is building a house on the north shore of Moon Lake. The rumors started last June when the 10 acre property on which the house is being built was purchased by Philadelphia Duds and Suds. A company owned by Malone, which is widely believed to be merely a front for its criminal undertakings. Secrecy has shrouded the product ever since construction began in October of last year. Four men and a locked gate block the driveway leading to the site. Unauthorized persons and vehicles are summarily turned away. Day and night, security guards patrol the heavily wooded lakefront property. Several large trucks strategically parked obscure any and all views of the site from the water, even though workmen have been sworn to silence. When asked if Mickey Malone was indeed building a home on Moon Lake, Waldo Matthias, the agent spearheading the Department of Justice's investigation of Malone's activities, only had this to say. If, if he is, I suggest he lived up to it while he can, because the place we're going to be sending him ain't, gone, ain't on Oh, I totally thought that was a gangster. My bad. My bad. Thought that was a gangster. Thought that was a gangster. <laughs> If he is, I suggest he live up to it while he can, because the place we're going to be sending him for sending him to ain't on no beach, and he's going to be there for a real long time. Mitchell Malone, Mitch Malone could not be reached for comment. Totally thought that was a gangster, my bad. That is fine. That's why I said gave him a real sweet voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey. uh. Ooh. Arrested 1932. That could be the, that could be the year. That could be the year right there. Maybe. I don't know if pinch means he died or got arrested. Well, we'll we'll use all the dates. We'll figure it out. Mick Malone, a Philadelphia businessman, long considered by police to be a bootlegger and a and a racketeer finally felt the sting of the sword of justice when he was arrested this morning at his house on Moon Lake. Careful to keep Malone's attack dogs at bay. Agents from the Internal Revenue Service and the department. <laughs> Is Malone the dude that's right here? <laughs> yeah. Armor <laughs> <laughs> of Justice raided the lake house home at dawn, catching Malone and his henchmen completely by surprise. Within seconds, Malone was handcuffed. Wearing only an overcoat over his pajamas, he was swept out the door and onto a waiting car. He was driven away to Philadelphia, where he was jailed on charges of tax evasion and conspiracy to violate prohibition laws. The police have been wise to Malone's criminal activities for years, but three previous attempts to incarcerate him have failed. Miserably, when Malone's shadowy associates, through bribes and threats, forced prosecution witnesses to recant their stories. This time, federal agents intend to rely on ledgers and tax returns to prove their case. Since 1927, when it was determined that even income gained through illegal... ...means is taxable, authorities have been eager to use this ruling to make thugs like Malone pay for their crimes. Mickey Malone's been making us look like fools for a long time, declared Bureau of Investigation agent Waldo Matthias, but today the good guys finally got the last laugh. Malone loudly and repeatedly proclaimed that he'd done nothing wrong as he was led to jail. However, 
His protestations of innocence ended abruptly when, apparently not wishing to be photographed in his pajamas, Malone took a swing at the press photographer. He was quickly subdued. Well, this is interesting. Yep. Let's see what this one is. War takes. 1941. Oh, I'll start of World War II. Oh, never mind. Okay. February 13th, 1941. Michael Mickey Malone died yesterday of liver failure in the federal... Wow, that's really ironic. In the federal penitentiary of Levensworth, Kansas, at the age of 52. Born in Newark, New Jersey in 1889, Malone owned and operated Philadelphia Duds and Suds. A chain of laundromats and dry cleaners allowed him to disguise and disperse the money he made as a racketeer. Compared to other gangsters, Malone kept a relatively low profile. His desire for privacy was enforced by four large dogs who never left his side. Although he was rumored to be involved in everything from rum running to gold heists, he never spent a single night in jail until he was arrested in 1932 for tax evasion. He was convicted the following year and was sentenced to eight years in federal prison. He died just two months before he was scheduled to be released. He never got to see World War II start. Nope. It's a thing, actually. Wait, when was Pearl Harbor started? Or when did Pearl Harbor start? Or happen? I don't remember. Emily Moon Lake. Emily's Moon Lake Antiques. Dragging ban is a drag. For Pennsylvania treasure hunters. That old them sandbars. <laughs> <laughs> I can say it like that. At least that's been the experience of Emily Griffin. Owner of M's Emporium on Moon Lake in central Pennsylvania. For the past 10 years, she has been dragging a heavy net back and forth along the bottom of the lake, uncovering and bringing to the surface relics from the. Nineteen twenties. I've I've dre I've dredged up everything from diamond tiaras to skeleton keys to full bottles of French. Co yeah, I don't know. Kanya, Kanya, Kanya. Sid, said Griffin. It just blows my mind that whatever those people will drop back then never bothered going back for. She was referring to the wealthy guest of gangster Mickey Malone, who built a home on the lake in 1925 and threw large rushes parties almost every weekend. Because the guests would travel to and from the house by boat, personal items were lost overboard with great frequency. Miss Griffin, uh, Miss Griffin estimates that she has made close to $20,000 selling her artifacts to antique hunters and tourists. But last week, her windfall came to an end. In the county in which Moon Lake is located, passed an ordinance making the recovery of objects from the lake bed illegal. The ban arose from the fact that the bottom of Moon Lake is composed of unusually fine sand. <laughs> when distributed, it clouds the water, disturbed. sometimes for days. When disturbed. My bad. When disturbed, it clouds the water, it clouds the water, sometimes for days posing a threat to the aquatic plants and fish that otherwise thrive there. Park ranger Jeff Atkins, who oversees the state park surrounding the lake, initiated the ban. I'm gonna try my be best to remember his voice. I actually can't do his voice, huh? The eco-balance of Moon Lake is simply too delicate to ignore, he contends. But Miss Griffin begs to differ. The whole thing is just plum, mer plum ridiculous, she says. You know what all those stuff, all that stuff down there is doing right now? It's resting, running away, polluting the water. Heck, by getting out of there, I'm doing the county a favor. Well, unfortunately, the county doesn't see it that way, and it appears that Miss Griffin will have to abandon what had become a pleasantly profitable hobby. Oh, I don't know, she shrugs. I can still sell the stuff that washes up on shore, <laughs> and that happens, you know. Especially after a good storm. So I, may, so I may be down, she says. Eyes twinkling. But I ain't necessarily out. Money won't get flushed down this toilet. Watch the Septics Roadshow. Monday nights on Plumbing Broadcast Service. Check your little listings for broadcast times. PBS. <laughs> <laughs> well, we learned some interesting stuff, didn't we? Yeah, uh, yes. there you go. Turn into PBS on Monday nights. <laughs> You're back. 
I noticed you have a dog. <laughs> That's Yogi. Who never goes out unless he's on a leash. Where's Boo Boo? Hey, Boo Boo. <laughs> I couldn't help but notice that he's about the same size as those ghost dogs were. I hope you're not suggesting I trained Yogi to run around in the middle of the night barking and attacking houses. I finished putting all those envelopes in order. Excellent. Thank you, Miss Drew. And to show my gratitude, I've got something for you. Chances are it isn't a paycheck. No, it's an honorary Junior Park Ranger pin. I keep them on hand so I can give Yay. them to children whom I see demonstrating respect for park rules and regulations. A little bit of positive reinforcement. We're taking the money. Unfortunately, I don't get to give them out that often. Oh, gee, thanks, Stranger Acres. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Well, then go away. Let's go talk to M. We still need some camouflage gear. Yep. Seems nobody likes anybody around here. <laughs> nice Junior Park Ranger pin. You must really be on Acre's good side. Any word from Tucker, what's his name? He hasn't been by to move that tree yet. I'll give him another call. But like I said, the man marches to the beat of another drummer. A very slow drummer. These so-called ghost dogs left very real paw prints. I saw some near the cemetery that's by the Malone house. Have you ever been there? Can't say as I have. Poking around cemeteries ain't exactly a hobby with me. Does the name Waldo Matthias mean anything to you? Hmm. Can't say as it does. To make a long story short, I need some camouflage gear. Got some right over here. One size fits all. But I'm running kind of low on bait. So if you go out and get me, oh, say a dozen little critters, I'll give you the camos. What? A dozen mm. little critters? Worms, spiders, beetles, grubs. Anything that wriggles on its belly will do. Just look under stuff. Rocks, logs, dead leaves. Should be able to find 12 in no time. Do I need some kind of permit? Things ain't quite that bad around here. At least not yet. Now, if Jeff Aker's daddy was still around, you might get arrested for cruelty to animals or some such nonsense. Joe Akers used to be the deputy sheriff. Real critter lover that one was. Joe Akers is Jeff's father? That's right. Hmm. I found mm. an old newspaper in Sally's house that contained an article on Mickey Malone. It really got my curiosity going. What else can you tell me about him? Person you should talk to is Jeff Akers. He's got this historical museum thing going out at that ranger station of his. How do I get to the museum? Just up late from Sally's on the east side. Guess I'll see you later. Always a pleasure. Okay. So he lied about being related to that Acres guy, didn't he? Well, that can be explained. Um... Maybe he, he seems like he's a real stickler for law enforcement, right? Maybe just someone to be associated with someone who's associated with criminal. Let's see. Let's see if we can get him to admit something. You're back. Oh, we can't Thanks talk to him. Thanks for all your help. Okay. Always a pleasure. Well, maybe later we'll be able to confront him about it. I guess not yet. Now, this is my least favorite part of the game. We have to go look for bugs. Day yes. My and favorite. night. <laughs> It's not his favorite part of the game, he just said. This is what inspired Pokemon, guys. No, it didn't. Yeah, it did. Pokemon was already Bug collecting? around. Bug collecting? That's what inspired the guy who created Pokemon. Uh-huh. Okay. Yup. We're going to look day and night. Night and day. Night and day! Give me the worms. Come here. Goobers, get back here. Okay. This is gonna be fun. We gotta look over all the rocks. Go. 
Is there something? I don't know why they're acting like there's still something there when there's not. I'll just... Okay. You're not able to pick any of those up? I, I don't know. I would think worms would be fine. Maybe I didn't click it fast enough? I don't know. I don't. You think I could get to that rock back there, but no. You think? Tree. Is that a, was that a bird or was that a chainsaw? I think it was a bird. I can't bother to. Can't bother to care, sorry. Not right now, I have to get bugs. I'm looking for bugs. No. Well. All right. We got to come back at night. Oh, uh, back to sleeping. Yep, back to sleeping. Uh, sleep all day, for all night. Yeah, Sonny. Get the chips and dip. We got a I'm party. All chips, man. I'm all out dip because I used the dip for the chips. <laughs> well, there's something called please get more. <laughs> yeah. Get more. <laughs> no. Get more. Oh, my job description. Then we're not going to party. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Uh, those look too rotten. What Nancy Drew? You're rotten. Oh. Vic. Yeah. Vic, he just went there. I know. <laughs> Next, you're gonna say the dark three billion percent of Sunny's paycheck. No. Oh, okay. Not right now. Deduct five billion of Sunny's paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> 
try to do a uh, Joseph Joestar move on you. Oh, this is spooky enchanted music. Perfect for this forest. Blow worms! Yay! Find one with bugs under it. Do you need to? Are you sure you don't need to do something with the box? Just, just let me do my thing. Do I not have enough? I don't know. I think I'm still missing one. Sure, am I still missing one? everywhere for the day and the night time. She's supposed to say something? Maybe she's supposed to say, there! That's all of them. I don't... I don't quite know. No, I'm just going the wrong way. Um... Yeah, I'm not 100% sure if I'm missing an area or if that's all of them. Um, I believe you needed 12. Really? Is that what she said? Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, tell me you're here. Okay, I'm not going to realize it. I just now realized the way you're looking that, like, when you saw well, the bug, when, I, when we were seeing the bugs that you were looking at the box, I just now saw that. I just now realized that. Yeah. That was a box and not, um, what's underneath, like, the rocks and stuff. Yeah. So if you said we need 12, then I guess we have them. I think so. So I remember her saying. How's the bait finding coming along? Got him right here. Well now, you done all right for a city gal. Here you go. Hope whatever you're hiding from won't catch you. <laughs> How you holding up? Guess I'll see you later. You betcha. Yep, yep. All right, now we can get the rest of those birds for red. Yay. to go back into the forest yep. for another journey.
here's a good question for you all. If someone else happened to be in this forest, would they see Kristen or would they see, Na see Nancy Drew? Which one would they actually see? Comment down below your guesses. You know, maybe there's no birds know, here because I didn't go first thing in the morning. Because you know, we still haven't seen Kristen and Nancy Drew in the same room before. Yeah, that's right. I'm sus. Mm-hmm. She's the one who did it. Nessie Drew did it. Kristen did it. They're both. They both did it. I am her and she is me. And you both are the ones who actually did the crime. Wahaha. If I could make it out of the stupid forest, that'd be great. Okay. I think I need to like get up right early in the morning. Probably. Oh, I think if I go to M's, that takes part of the day away. I don't... Just a theory. Yeah, see, we need this happy little chirpy music. Yes, we do. It's the good morning this music. music. Where the, day, the music when you think that this is going to be a good day. Not the music when you realize, oh, it's not third grade. I'm kidding. But... Yes, you, this morning. Yep. Actually, unironically so, because I was a little mad that I didn't wake up to my alarm clock exactly when I wanted to. Because I needed to be at the lab today uh. at 10, and I got there at 11 instead, and the professor left. Sounds like a personal problem to me. You're right, that is a personal problem. <laughs> it's called not waking up when I want to. How am I lost already? Okay, come on game. How was I in the zone earlier and now I'm okay. This is good. Okay. Oh, where'd Nancy Drew go? I can't see her. There we go. Where'd she go, guys? I can't. Oh, oh, there she is. There okay, she is. There she is. Oh, you missed her again. There she went. Oh, wait, hold on. Did you see her? No, no, no. I can't. I can't. The joke was she was wearing camouflage, and so I was, I was like, I can't. I can't see Nancy Drew. Where'd she go? Oh. oh All right. All right. All right. I got a funny story. Okay. So, when I was a senior in high school, I was in a physics class, and uh, there was this guy named Lincoln. And school was doing one of its, you know, event things where you had to, like, dress up in a certain, you know, color get-up or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or, I don't know, it's special week or whatever. But it was, like, camouflage day or something like that. And there's this guy we know that was sitting at, like, a little live group table named Lincoln. He showed up in full camouflage. And so me and the other two people who were also, like, really sarcastic... Uh, people mm -hmm. screw with them saying whoa where'd Lincoln go we can't see him right mm -hmm. um and I was like wait I see Lincoln but he's just a floating head what happened to the rest of your body Lincoln all right yeah and I'm telling you we carried this joke on for the rest of the semester anytime he'd say something like wait where'd Lincoln go why is he just a floating head I bet he got annoyed after a while he just kept rolling his eyes. I think I remember he corrected one of the people on something, mm -hmm. and he said, "Wow, that's, some, that's quite that's quite a lot of talk for someone who's a floating head." How's the bird watching coming along? I just can't seem to find a red-tailed hawk. Any suggestions? Well, there's got to be lots around here. You haven't been going around wearing sunglasses and earmuffs, have you? No, Red, I haven't. Well, according to my bird map, they like to nest in the big tree that's just to the southwest of the Malone house. I suggest you park yourself nearby and wait. Bound to spot one sooner or later. See you in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We've been making good progress, but we still can't find that hawk, so I wanted to talk to him about it. Well, I guess you're supposed to go to some big tree to the south. Let's see, let me go back to daytime. Hmm. 
Well, I don't see any hawks, but this is probably the tree Red was talking about. At least it was the tree. That sounded like a hawk. There it is. I better get a picture before it takes off. Ooh. What? Do you see that? Interesting. Hey, what is that hawk standing on? Oh, that looks like a speaker. Mm. Uh oh. Huh? Here we go again. I better get out Whoa. of here. <gasps> My arms and legs are tied. I can't move. Kristen can't move, At guys. Least I can kick. If I could just get that scythe down, I could use the blade to cut the rope around my wrists and free my hands. Start over. Uh, can I start over? Can I have second chance? Okay. This thing burn up. I've got to put it out. Okay. Is there water in it? Perfect. What in blazes happened? I saw the fire from my platform and came running. You weren't in there playing with matches, were you? I was looking at birds, and then I noticed something on the house, and the next thing I knew I was locked in the tool shed and somebody was setting it on fire. Whoa, you're not making much sense. Probably smoke inhalation or something. Come talk to me after you've cleaned yourself up and gotten some sleep. I need to tell you something. Somebody tried to kill you? I didn't say that. Somebody knocked you out, locked you in a shed, set it on fire, and you think they were, what, just pulling a prank? Wake up yeah. and smell the hostile vibes, Nancy. I guess it's just hard for me to believe that anybody would consider me to be that big a threat. I should have never let you stay there by yourself. Sally, I'm fine. I feel bad about your tool shed, though. Who cares about the shed? It was full of junk anyway. I'm glad to be rid of it. That's kind of the way Ranger Akers saw it, too. He showed up right after the bird watcher did and ticketed me for burning refuse in a manner that endangered park property. Ugh, that man is insufferable. Emily was nice, though. She came by right afterwards and wouldn't leave until I drank the tea she made for me. Look, Nancy, one more time. If you want to leave, just say the word and I'll come get you. Sally, one more time. I'm fine. Well, then promise me you'll be careful, okay? I promise. I'll be in touch. You better. I'll call you right back, just in case I haven't talked to you about everything. <laughs> Hey, Sally, it's Nancy. Nancy, hi, how's it going? Where'd all that stuff in your tool shed come from? It's just junk left behind by previous owners. Came with the house. I've been meaning to take inventory and start pitching stuff, but I didn't. If they ever make procrastination a crime, I'm done for. Are you aware that you're the proud owner of your very own cemetery? Yes. When the realtor told me there was a cemetery on the property, I went, ugh. But when I saw how far from the house it was, and how small it was, I decided I could live with it, as it were. So you didn't go out there much? Uh, no. Talk to you later. Stay in touch. You did it. Sally did it. Sally did it. She wanted to grow that shed, after all. Let's talk to my friend, Bess. 
Lucy, how's it going? This caller ID stuff is going to take some getting used to. I'm here too, Dan. What's going on? There's a private Her cemetery name is not, in the not woods out back. Malone and his dogs are supposedly buried there. Creepy. And there were paw prints in the cemetery. Fresh paw prints. Are you sure you're going to be all right there by yourself? We'd volunteer to drive out there and keep you company, but unfortunately, my car's in the shop, and you know what a scary wow, how convenient. George is. That's okay. There's really no room, and believe me, living conditions here are pretty primitive. Scaredy cat, huh? You're gonna pay for that remark, dear cousin. Moon Lake is gorgeous, but it's so remote. The park ranger is the closest thing they have to a sheriff around here. Park ranger? What's he like? Which, as we all know, is Bess's way of saying, Park ranger? Is he cute? Not true, George. Nancy thinks everybody's cute, so what will be the point? Anyway, Nancy, you were saying? His name's Jeff Akers. He's very helpful, polite, efficient, knowledgeable. Sounds boring. In fact, he probably knows more about the area than all the other residents of Moon Lake combined. Sounds very boring. What's he know about <laughs> these alleged ghost dogs? He thinks they're just plain old dogs that for some reason like to run around at night scaring people. And what does Detective Drew think about the dogs? I think Sally had good reason to be scared of them. I don't blame her for leaving. Which leads me to think that maybe that was the whole idea. Somebody had those dogs attack Sally in order to scare her away? Why would anybody do that? She was there for less than a month. You'd have to be a total creep to make enemies that fast. And Sally's one of the nicest people I know. Ooh, Nancy! Speaking of cute guys, Frank and yeah. party called. I filled them in on where you are and what you're doing, and they're dying to hear from you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what are they up to? Compared to you, nothing. As I was telling them about this latest case of yours, I could hear them turning green with envy right through the receiver. Their number is 280-555-4865. Bess didn't recognize it when they called and almost didn't answer the phone. Good thing my cousin here has a memory like an elephant, huh? What's that supposed to mean? Call them, Nancy. They're dying to hear from you. But remember, Frank's cute and all that, but George and I want to hear from you, too. Yeah, no fair discussing the case with them from now on and not with us. I promise you'll keep us up to speed. <laughs> I promise. This bird watcher I met has got me taking pictures of birds for some survey he's doing. He's a bit of a grump. Does he live nearby? No, he just kind of hangs out in the woods. In fact, I only see him at night. Interesting. He's in the woods at night. The dogs are in the woods at night. Could he have had a reason for wanting Sally out of the Malone house? Maybe. Not likely. From what Ranger Akers told me, Red would like everybody around here out of their houses. He thinks there's too many people at Moon Lake, and it's ruining the bird well, I already know who Sonny is not suspecting in this game. Fanatic equals suspect. I don't know, I just think that bird noisy dogs- I just think noisy dogs would be counterproductive to his bird watching. Get That's this. all I'm thinking. It turns out that Jeff Akers will be one happy park ranger if Sally sells her Moon Lake property back to the bank, and they wind up selling it to the parks department. You think he might be responsible for all this ghost dog stuff? He has a motive, and he has a dog. Although it doesn't look at all like the dogs that have been scaring Sally. But it shows he knows something about dogs. Better pull out your suspect list and pencil him in, Nan. I still say you guys should lighten up on him. You two would get a kick out of the woman who owns this little store on Moon Lake. How so? She's a real country gal. We got this deal worked out where if I need something she carries, she'll let me do little chores to pay for it. What kind of little chores? Oh, like collecting bugs and worms so she can sell them to fishermen as bait. Sounds delightful. Unfortunately, she may not be as harmless as she seems. Why do you say that? She also sells antiques from the 1920s that she finds in Moon Lake. Is that bad? If she's been getting them by dragging the lake in front of Sally's house, it is. That's illegal. You know what that means? It means Emily Griffin has made my suspect list. Because if she is breaking the law, she'd want the Malone house to stay empty so she can keep dragging the lake without anybody seeing her. Did I mention that all the water in Sally's house comes from a well? Ew, really? Does it taste like rotten eggs? Not all well water tastes like rotten eggs, Bess. I don't know if it does or not. Because the well is so old, I need to get the water tested before I drink it. Good plan. Nothing will wreck your day faster than a nice tall glass of contaminated water. I found the coolest old newspaper. It's from 1927, and on the front page is an article about Mickey Malone and a man named William Aker. Acres? Any relation to park ranger Jeff Acres? When I asked, Jeff Acres said that it was just a huge unfortunate coincidence. According to the paper, William Acres was Mickey Malone's most trusted employee, 
his number one go-to guy. Where'd you find it? You know how I always seem to wind up in houses with secret passageways? Sometimes I think they follow you around. Well, I found these hidden stairs leading from the living room into the cellar. What's down there? That's what's weird. The stairs led down into this empty space. There's some kind of safe in the wall and a set of stairs leading to a door that goes outside, but that was it. Hmm. Why would Malone bother hiding a staircase if it didn't go somewhere important? I could sure use a nice big hint right about now. Try to figure out the combination to the lock on the wall safe. Who knows? Today's date may turn out to be a very lucky one for you. And one of many very unlucky ones for Mickey Malone. Alright, so they want us to open the safe. Bye, you guys. Don't be a stranger. Take care. We should call the Hardy Boys, though. You should use today's date. November 1st, 2021. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Joe. It's Nancy. Nancy? How's it going? Uh, no, wait. Don't answer that. Talk about the weather or something. The weather? Yeah, that'll give me time to grab the other phone and take it outside. Frank's washing the car. He'll kill me if he misses anything. Here, wait a sec. Take a break, it's Nancy. Hang on, he's putting the hose down. He's drying his hands. He's walking over. Nancy, hi, what's up? Best and George say you've got another mystery on your hands. Or should we say, on your paws. They told uh -huh. you about the dogs? We made them tell us everything. Pumped them dry. As you may have guessed, we're not exactly rolling in detective work here. What? So you're moving vicariously through me. It's not yep. the first time, sad to say. What conclusions have you reached so far, detective? Ooh, we could tell them some things. If nothing else, those ghost dogs are very well trained. I'm watching to see who owns and or trains dogs around here. Good plan. But don't forget, a really smart perpetrator is going to make it look like he or she has no connection to dogs whatsoever. But then a really, really smart perp might have dogs all over the place and not bother to hide it, because he or she would figure you'd never suspect anyone so obvious. That's a great not answer. Emily Griffin doesn't seem to have any dogs. Uh-oh. Move her up on your suspect list. I'd move her down. You know, Joe, something tells me we're not helping. <laughs> Yeah. I'm convinced that someone is using those ghost dogs to scare Sally into abandoning Malone's house. If I can just figure out why, I might be able to figure out who. Never hurts to look for motive. They're so helpful. Malone and his four right. dogs are supposedly buried in a little cemetery near the house. They've all got headstones inscribed with when they were born and when they died. That's interesting. Did Malone have family? Not that I'm aware of. Then who had the tombstones inscribed? That's exactly what I was wondering. Sounds like this latest puzzle of yours is still missing a few pieces. Yeah, they don't help. Later, guys. We'll uh, you don't want to see what their hint was? It was probably going to tell me to go to the lock. The safe. Maybe. Do you really want me uh, to? Help? I can call them back. I, they might say something different for all I know. It's just something hard to see. I bet you five billion dollars is gonna Hello? be the same here. Frank. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Joe. Pick up the phone. Joe's in the kitchen. Worked up a real appetite watching me vacuum out the car. Hello? Well, Hi, in Joe. one it's second. Nancy. What are you eating? All right. Sandwich. Either roast beef or really old turkey. Can't tell. Don't care. Wow. So, how's life as a dog catcher? Here I seem go. to be getting nowhere fast. Anybody have any suggestions? We can probably come up with a few, but we're not going to make it easy for you. After all, it's your case, not ours. Try to figure out the combination of the lock on the wall. Uh oh, okay. Well, then, this is your lucky day. You lost. An unlucky day for Mickey Malone. Later, guys. Cough it up, Sunny. Cough up. I didn't agree to a bet. Yes, he did. I didn't agree to a bet. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Victor, did he no, agree? No, I didn't. Yeah. I did not agree. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did I ever yep, say, okay, yep. you're on. I'll take that three billion dollar bet or whatever. No, I didn't. I didn't say anything. Uh huh. Yeah. I didn't say anything. You lose. You lose. All I, did, all I did was recommend that you try to see if they had a different hint. Okay. Uh, let's try 1932. this can I do anything 
you have to use that pen. But I think you already did. I think you already did what you need to do. With it. Okay. Uh, 1932 did not work, so maybe that was when he died. Oh, the or the year no, he, was, when he born. was arrested. Uh, let's try 1941. I think that's actually when he died. I think 32 is when he got arrested. Yeah. Really? Okay. Let's try 19... I, I did 1932, right? Did I... Something else is supposed to do? No, I could try 1927. Again. Was it 27 or 25? There were two. Oh, okay. Seven. No. All right. Uh, let's Wait, try hey, hold on. Are you able to press up that button in the center? Oh, that's a reset button. I think you might be needing to reset it every time. Oh. Okay, let's try 1941. Nineteen thirty two. No. All right, let's try nineteen twenty seven. Nope. And nineteen twenty five is when he bought the house. Think where he was building it. Unless I'm just not entering it properly, because I feel like we have the date we need. These are long combinations. Mm -hmm. Oh, what if I needed the month? What if I needed the mm. month with the date? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Because let's take a look at how many numbers it needs. It was six, right? One, One two, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to the newspaper articles and we'll know. It's not just a year, it's a full on date. Yeah, you need two more numbers. Okay. Oh, we're here. Good news. I have information on your mystery woman. Thank you so much. Is she still alive? Her name these days is Vivian Whitmore. She lives in Las Vegas, and her number is 702-555-9137. Okay. Sorry to bother you again, but did those results from the water test come in yet? There's something here for you from the State Department of Health. Do not drink. Oh, arsenic. Oh my gosh, not only is the water bad, but it seems like the well may have been contaminated deliberately. Wow. I wouldn't go jumping to conclusions without proof, Ms. Drew. I'm sure there's a far it less melodramatic worse. explanation. Where's Yogi? In the run, out back. Even out of sight, he's under my full control, as park rules require. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Okay, let's go back to this file. That was on Emily. Was this when Malone died? Okay. February 13th. Uh, Feb 13th. 
try some things because I think those are the two most important dates I don't think the date of him um, buying or yeah. building the house or anything it's one of those oh why did I go it to says Silas? M now. Oh, I'm going to Silas. What am I talking about? yeah you're going to the house yeah, yeah I thought know. I pressed on M's <laughs> I don't know why oh, anyway um I mean pinched you know that, I think Pinch just dead, think mean, right? Yeah. Okay. No, but it's not m month, try day as well. Okay. First, let's try um, 13, 1941. One, Nothing. No. Nope. Alright, now let's just try a zero two. That would represent um February, right? <laughs> yeah. Zero two nineteen forty one. Nothing. Nothing. Maybe the other oh. Could be the other way around. What, 1941 02? Yeah, or 1941 01. Buy it back, let's Black Tuesday. Black Tuesday, 10, 29, 20. Wait a second. Wait, wait, what if we're going about this all wrong? What if it's month, day, and the last two digits of the year? Could be. So it would be zero two thirteen forty one. Could be. Makes that makes sense. This is a combination as well. Okay, let's try. Zero two thirteen forty. No. Really. Let's try. Okay, let's try 2 9 1932 for the day he was arrested. No. Okay. Let's try zero. We'll try one. Several possibilities. Let's try zero one nineteen thirty two. No, okay. Then let's try zero one two nine. Uh, thirty two. It was the date that he was arrested. I bet those were deer mice. I want to try something. I want to grab it without the gloves. Let's see what happens. Oh. Ready? Right. I better be careful. I better be careful. Oh, it won't let me. No, we haven't heard yet. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's, 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 it's locked. William A. Cruz, 1933-1942. 
speakeasy. They make him alone. Make him went to prison. But when they were talking to him in the paddy wagon, he told me to take care of his dogs. And when the time come, and the time came to do their tombstones like he told me, then he whispered to me to look under the Victoria. But Victor, what well, actually was was that say? Victorol, Victorola, the Victorola, the oh, uh. speakeasy at Moon Lake. He said to find a map to the gold he stole two years ago. Then they showed him to the wagon. That was that. Poor Mickey. That was a guy. That was a guy who never spent one night in jail. Supposed to spend eight years in prison. Who never make it. I think he were. I think he wants me to have the gold because deep down he knows he's never coming home. The day. Oh, my bad. Anyway, I looked under the Victor the Victorola and found the map. The problem is there's nothing on it except a bunch of lines in the woods. The dogs will lead the way. There's no X marking the spot or directions or nothing. But I need, but I need money bad. My wife and baby haven't had anything decent to eat in months. So I'm going to pack them up and move them to Moon Lake permanently so I can spend all my time looking for the gold. May 4th, 1933. Mickey never told me outright that he was the guy who pulled off the hole in the floor gold heist. He always said the less I knew, the healthier I'd stay. But according to the papers, a bunch of gold was stolen off a moving train right under the noses of a, about a dozen Pinkertons. Mickey must have greased somebody's. Tom um, real good and got him to cut a hole in the floor off the boxcar the gold was going to be shipped in. After the gold was loaded, one of the boys crawled under the train and pulled himself into the boxcar. That's when the train was moving. He dropped the gold down the hole into the tracks. Mickey's boys picked it up and got away clean. Nobody ever suspected Mickey was behind it. So what I'm looking for is 20 gold bars. And that paper said they all said all together they weighed about 600 pounds. The question is, did Mickey hide them in one place or did he spread them around? He must have buried them. Where? I just thought of something. Maybe Mickey trained his dogs to go to the gold if you'd say the right word. I want to try saying gold to them tomorrow on sea. What happens? Fourth night, you see. I've said every word I can think of to all the dogs, but they haven't led me anywhere except around in circles. I spent the last month following them around. First Xander, then Vitus, then Lucy. I don't, I don't have to follow Iggy because all he does is sleep on the porch. So it looks like I'm going to have to start digging. I'll dig under the porch first, seeing as that's where Iggy always is. I'm gonna make a note of that. Iggy is always on porch. Right. That's important. A month ago, oh, October 21st, 1933. A month ago, I started working as a handyman over in Lewistown to make ends meet. So even though I stop by Mickey's every day to feed the dogs, I can only look for the gold at night. I dug around under the porch, but didn't find nothing. I marked the porch. Joe Akers? Emily said Jeff Akers' father was named Joe. Maybe Jeff is related to William Akers after all. On the map with a big eye for Iggy because that's the place he always leads me to. I was so busy digging last Tuesday night that I almost forgot uh, that I almost wasn't there when my son was born. We're calling him, jo we're calling him Joe. His big sister is real happy. He says baby Joe is just like the dolly she's always wanted, but we can never afford to get her. Truth is, we can't really afford Joe neither. I keep I keep writing to Mickey, asking him to please tell me straight where the gold is, but he never writes back. I just have to keep digging. Leaven, Leavenworth Prison, Leavenworth 48, Kansas. September 9th, 1935. Now I spend all my free time digging in the woods. I dig around everything that could be a landmark. Logs, rocks, trees, stumps. But I never find nothing. Plus, I keep getting lost. Paths look so much alike, especially at night, that I spend most of my time trying to figure out where I am. So last Sunday, I memorized a way to the cemetery. It's L R R L L R L R L R L L R L L R R L R R L. Thanks. <laughs> I kind of run that one down though. I did. All right, February 11th, 1939. 
Even though Mickey never allowed the dogs in the speakeasy or the tunnels, I've been looking there for the gold because I looked everywhere else I can think of and got nowhere. Last week I found out that Mickey changed the passcode to the spigots in the speakeasy. This got my hopes up because the way I figured it, why would Mickey change the code without telling me unless he was hiding something? But when I finally figured out the new code, I didn't find nothing in the tunnel that opened up that wasn't there before. Why make you spend all that money on pictures of all the dogs of his I'll never understand. March 2nd, 1942. I don't give up. Mickey's dead. Uh, and so are all his dogs. I never find the gold. I got a good job offer over in Harrisburg and I'm gonna take it. Little Joe and Sarah deserve a better life than they've gone so far and that's high and it's high time Callie got a nice house and a husband doesn't spend all his time chasing after something he can't find. But I'm leaving this journal. Here, because who knows, maybe someday I'll suddenly remember something Mickey said. Now finally hit me where he hid the gold. Maybe I'll come back here and find it after all. But in the meantime, I call my family. They're what's important. They're treasure enough. Very well done, Sonny. Yeah. Probably wasn't really good to do that kind of accent, but I wonder what that means. I think we're gonna take this. Since I actually know what the uh, Victrola is, it's a record player. Ah, got it. So we've learned some interesting things. Yeah. We've learned that there's possibly gold. Well, interesting. Promise of gold, and someone's opened up the thing before because they wrote down the passcode and then pinched. Mm. I think we should call that woman. I suppose Joe. Her. William Makers. Maybe William Makers. Let's call Vivian the girlfriend of Malone. If you're selling something, hang up right now. I got an air horn in my hand that could deafen a dinosaur, and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh, no, no, please. I'm not selling anything. Believe me. Is this Vivian Whitmore? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You got exactly five seconds to state your business. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Moon Lake, Pennsylvania. I just wanted to ask you some questions. All right. The Moon Lake Park Ranger said you might call, but you have to talk fast. An old friend of mine is flying in today from Florida, and when I say old, I mean old, as in five years older than I am. Don't bother <laughs> trying to do the math, sweet stuff, you'll hurt yourself. So, that ranger fella said you found an old picture of me. It was of you and Mickey Malone. Do you remember him? Of course I remember him. I remember everything about that time of my life. It was the roaring 20s for crying out loud. One of the most exciting decades in American history. Just because I've got a few years on most people doesn't mean my brain's turned to tapioca, sweet stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Mickey and I dated for five years. Oh, I knew what he was, and I didn't approve, believe you me. But I was young. And we got along so well, and he was so considerate. He always kept birch beer on tap at that speakeasy of his just for me. Do you know anything about the safe that's in the cellar of his house at Moon Lake? You must be talking about the wall safe. That was Willie. He was a guy who worked for Mickey. Did all Malone's employees have their own safes? Not hardly. Mickey treated most of his employees like dirt, but not Willie. He honestly liked Willie, trusted him. And when Willie decided he wanted his own safe, Mickey said, what the hey? No one knew the combination, not even Mickey. Mostly because Willie was constantly changing it. He was a little paranoid and superstitious. Well, as I recall, he picked the most unlucky number he could think of and used that uh. for the combination. He called it a reverse jinx. Unlucky number? Like what? Oh, like the day that something bad happened. Like when the stock market crashed, or when somebody died, or the address of a house that caught fire, or the phone number of the police, that sort of thing. What oh. can you tell me about Malone's speakeasy? It 
it was in the basement, right there at Moon Lake. Mm. Feds never knew about it, but everybody who was anybody on the East Coast back then, actors, musicians, bankers, politicians, they knew. You weren't big time unless you'd made at least one trip to Moon Lake Mickey's. That's weird. I'm staying in his old house on Moon Lake, and I haven't seen any sign of a speakeasy. Of course you haven't. You're not supposed to. Only Mickey and Willie knew how to get into the speakeasy from the house. The rest of us had to go in and out the regular way, through the cemetery. The cemetery? There was a lock hidden in one of the tombstones in that little cemetery behind the house. You needed a key to unlock it, and when you did, stairs would appear that led to the speakeasy. Do you have any idea how to get into Malone's speakeasy from the house? I sure don't. That saloon was built using two main ingredients, concrete and secrecy. Mickey always bragged that nobody could get in unless he wanted them in, and I do believe he was right. But I'll tell you what, if you sent me that picture of me and Mickey, I'll send you my key. Ooh, I like that. The key to the tombstone? You still have it? It's in the bottom of my jewelry box. I've come this close to throwing it out a hundred times, but it's so small and the memories it brings back are so big. Well, I just couldn't, as a joke. Mickey had a tombstone made with the name of this federal agent who had it out for him inscribed on it. That's the one the key unlocks. Oh, Waldo. William Akers, uh. the guy you call Willie. He wrote about looking for the gold that Malone had supposedly buried on his property at Moon Lake. Do you know anything about that? The hole in the floor gold heist. Well, I'll be darned. So it's true? He did bury gold on his property? Truth be told, when Mickey told me he was the one who pulled off that heist and that he'd buried 20 gold bars at Moon Lake, I didn't believe him. I thought he was making it up. See, Mickey and I were on the outs by then. I thought he was just trying to entice me to come back. But if he told Willie the same thing, maybe there's something to the story after all. Do you have any idea where he might have hidden it? Afraid not. Mickey was so secretive that the men who completed his house at Moon Lake were not only forbidden to talk about the work they'd done, but they were ordered to leave the state for good or else. But you know, I... He mentioned a map. Yes. He said he was making a treasure map in that... The dog. Something about those dogs of his. The dogs will lead the way? He was always saying that. In fact, I'm pretty sure he had it engraved on his tombstone. Think, Viv, think. He said he was making a treasure map. And that he was also having paintings done of each dog. He made it sound like one thing had something to do with the other, like he was giving me some big important clue. But I just figured he was playing games, trying to lure me back with mystery and intrigue. I told him to buzz off. Maybe I shouldn't have. Did he say what he was going to do with the paintings? He said he was going to hang them in the speakeasy, and I'm sure that's precisely what he did. Can you remember anything about Malone's dogs that might suggest where he hid the gold? I stayed away from his dogs. They made me nervous, always jumping around, barking at this or that. The only one I liked was... Uh, oh, what was his name? Iggy! Iggy. I liked <laughs> Iggy because he was nice and quiet. He just lay on the porch all day and didn't make a peep. It's been fun talking to you. 23 skidoo, kiddo. All right. Well, we should go uh, mail that package, that painting, so we can get the key. Yes. Again, Miss Drew, am I in for another interrogation? I'd yes. like to mail this photo to the woman in Las Vegas. Can you do that for me? As always, I'm here to serve, Miss Drew. Just give it to me, and I'll take care of it. I'm sure she'll be very pleased to get this back. What do you know about a man named Joe Akers? Why do you ask? I understand he used to be the deputy here. 
So? Are you sure you're not related to William Akers? All right, all right. William Akers was my grandfather. Why didn't you tell me that before? It's not exactly something I'm proud of. My father spent his whole life trying to make people forget what my grandfather was, and trying to make sure people who didn't know what he was never found out. I've been doing the same thing. What did William Akers do after Malone was arrested? I'm afraid you're going to have to excuse me, Miss Drew. In case you've forgotten, I'm a very busy um, man. I apologize yeah. for my previous behavior. As a park ranger, I strive to keep my personal feelings in check at all times, and that time I failed. It's my duty as a public servant to try to make it up to you. What would you like to know? What can you tell me about the gold that Malone supposedly buried on his property? As far as I know, it doesn't exist. It's just one of those rumors people want to believe, so they do. Thanks for all your help. Always a Grandpappy pleasure. didn't think so. Hello again, Miss Drew. Did your grandfather ever find any gold on Malone's property? If he did, he never spent it. He wasn't poor when he died, but he certainly wasn't rich. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Oh, wait, no, he didn't. Doggo. Good doggo. Let's just try to kill you. All right, so now that we've dropped off the picture, let's see. Maybe we should go to M's Emporium and see if we can talk to him about anything since we're out here. Anything about the gold that Mickey Malone supposedly buried somewhere on his property? All I got to say about it is, if there really was a bunch of gold buried somewhere and nobody ever found it, it's for darn sure nobody ever will. Not with them dogs up there. Hmm. Guess I'll see you later. Always a pleasure. Ah, oh, you know what? I think I think I remember Red saying he needed to talk to us after we got out of that fire. Let's go pay Red a visit. Sounds like a good idea. We gotta wait till night time, though. I feel like the nighttime music sounds so sleuthy. Like we're I know. up to something. You came up here looking for those red tails. I gave my map a closer look and realized it was more than 50 years old. The reason you can't find them is probably because their favorite nesting tree is gone. Finding that hawk's gonna be harder than I thought, so why don't you just give me back my camera and I'll take it from here? It didn't get burned up in that fire or anything, did it? You'll be happy to know that I did get a picture of a red tailed hawk. So here's your camera back. I got all the birds. Thank you, Nancy. Nice work. You're a credit to your generation. I never noticed those gas cans before. I ran out of gas. So much for being prepared, huh? Well, that's all I wanted to tell you. I'm sure you've got places to go, things to see, people to pester. He seems suspicious right now. Mickey Malone supposedly buried a bunch of stolen gold bars on his property way back in the 20s. Did you know that? Really? That's interesting. I don't much care, but it's interesting. So you don't know anything about it? Nope. Okay. See you in a while. Just remember, eyes open, mouth shut. We couldn't talk to you about anything else? Howdy. See you in a while. Shh, down a notch. Remember. I don't know, Vic. Something's up with this dude right now. He saws. Saws. Well, let me think here. Hmm. I say we go back to bed. And we shall see if maybe we get a package. 
I mean, how long can it take for that lady to send us the key? Hope it shouldn't take long. that long. Shouldn't take as long as the cultural society from Scarlet Hand to send us the jade carving thing. Yeah. I swear, I think I made Nancy go to bed like five times before we got that package. Seems like six. Yeah, yeah. Package just arrived for you from Las Vegas. Ah, oh, much better. Great, Vivian sent me the key. I'll dispose of the package. Wouldn't want to break any littering laws, would we? Okay. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Say hi to the dog. Vivian again because I think there might be a, a, a little guest that we can hear from if I remember hello uh, is this Vivian no this is your station drop off Vivian's fixing snacks in the kitchen oh my gosh you station and drop off Harry Houdini's cousin? Remember, Vic? Remember? Yeah. No, Eustacia, wait. It's Nancy Drew. I talked to you on the phone a couple of months ago, just after a friend of mine was kidnapped in St. Louis. I asked you questions about the theater where the kidnapping took place, the Royal Palladium, remember? Nancy Drew, the Snoopy one. You're not dead yet? What? Uh, no. Most people, I talked to them one day. Next day, they're dead. It is an old age thing. Oh, stop being so morbid here. Have some clam dip. Hello? Nancy? So you know Eustacia, huh? Small world. Well, what's up? Uh, it's been fun talking to you. Absolutely, positively. Oh, there you go. I want you guys to hear your stash on top of. It's always nice when the cameos come back. Yes. Well, we got the key. So, let's go to the cemetery. Blindly. I don't need no directions written by Willie. What's his name? I can do this by myself. We'll just get lost along the way. That's part of the adventure. Yes. Oh, well. Almost there. Here we go. All right. So, this one's the nickname that uh, Mickey gave the, the detective that he really didn't like. He called him Baldo, because he was bald. It's too dark, Ooh. I need a flashlight. There we go. See oh, the batteries are going dead. Oh, I can't see a thing. I'd better go back. Okay. Uh, it's silly to try to explore this in the dark. Uh. Ah! Oops. Oops. Wait. Oh, the batteries are going dead. I can't see a thing. I'd better go back. I turned around, right? It's it's dark, Kristen. I know. Oh, whew. I made it out. 
Oh, dang it, the batteries are dead. We're gonna need to we get need some We need new more. batteries. You know what this means. Don't you? We had to go, we had to go see someone? Yep. A certain someone. Bird catcher guy? Nope. Emily? Yep. She's got the store. Up. I need flashlight batteries. Do you carry them? Yep. But you know, I've been meaning to make a pretty display out of them packs of combo coal over there for the longest time. Just can't seem to get around to it. In other words, you'd like me to give it a shot. Here's the way it should look when you're done. <laughs> okay. One smiling goldfish. <laughs> it's obviously never tried combo cola. <laughs> hey, Nancy. This mean you got them cans stacked? You bet. They look just like the picture you gave me, which you can have back. Here's your batteries, and thanks, Nancy. Thank you, Em. Now we're ready. to try to explore this in the dark. That's why we're not, Nancy. <laughs> Looks like a dead end, so... this way. Uh... 
was this like the same did it lead the same way I wonder oh yeah it was it was a fork or not a fork really just two ways and it still leads to the same way I think So this is the speakeasy. Whoa. Wow. We found the speakeasy. Nice. Dapper dog. Okay, well, I don't want to leave, but. Okay. That's if me. That is correct. The tree where Vitus would bark at the hawks used to be right about here. Oh, okay. She put the name Vitus right there. Interesting. Oh, and his collar is blue. I think I need to make a note of that. Those must be the spigots William Akers mentioned in his journal. Okay, here's Iggy. Iggy has green. Lucy would swim out to the shipwreck, which is about here. Hmm. Let's take a close look at Lucy. Lucy is green. Wait a second. Iggy was green too. Weird. Huh. I'll have to mark her as green as well. They both had green. Don't know what that did, but it's something. Let's see. And what's this? Huh. Wait a 
wait a second. Maybe. Oh. Oh, that's. Iggy is yellow. Apologies. I, I said it was green. I'm silly. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So red was Xander. So we need to make that an X. So we gotta make that a V. Okay. Yellow is Iggy. We need to make that an I. And green was Lucy, so we need to make it an L. saying a door in the tunnel opened. Okay. Let's save Lagom. And we're gonna go check that out. Okay, we need to go find where that was. Okay, we're getting to something here. A very special passageway opened. There are lights in here, so I don't need to carry that. So here's like a little thing of Iggy. Here's a map thing. Vetus. Another map thing. Lucy. Another map thing. Xander. Xander played by the pump, which is right here. Okay, there we go. And we got another map thing. And I wonder what happens. Can we go this way? That's a dead end. Okay. And what about... The music got so intense. What about this way? I hear something. Did you hear that? Yeah. Uh, that's, I'm hearing things. It's kind of creepy. Woo. I'm hearing like eating noises and stuff. Weird. Okay. Anyways. Let's go back to the map area. I think we need to use the map that looks the closest to the one that we've been scribbling on, which is this one. So we want to press the tiles of where we see the animals. So Lucy, we're going to press this. Vetus is going to be second row four up right there. 
Iggy is gonna be we're over third square. Right there, I believe. Oh, I have to actually Oh, okay, you know what? I'll just I can't I guess I can't keep the the tiles across from looking at the image, so I'll just copy the image real quick. For whatever reason I have to do. So I can have it in front of me. All right, let's try this again. There we go. That doesn't sound good. All right. We might get an idea of who the culprit is very soon. Okay. So, Vic, do you want to maybe tell me right now who you think could be behind all this? I mean, I'm still sus on the bird guy, but... I also have... Because what? The, uh, the park ranger is tied to someone. Mm-hmm. Like, two people, his father and his grandfather. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm, I'm kind of not sure. Okay. It's between those two for you. All right. It's some kind of lock. It's some kind of oh. lock. Well, it's some kind of lock. I okay. just realized pff, I might not be able to open this right now unless I can break it open with a pen. It's some kind of lock. Dag nabbit. <laughs> I thought we were gonna have the final reveal. I don't have the key. I don't think I. Did I miss it somewhere? Did I not? It's some kind of lock. It's some kind of lock. Really? I didn't know that, Nancy. Thank you. Well, okay, I have to figure this out. There's a key I didn't get? Hmm. No, I'm stumped. Where, where would I miss a key? Oh, oh, this opened. Okay, this opened. This is what we need. All right, I thought I thought we were gonna have to open that other door. I think that's for a little bit later. Okay, you ready? Yes. Now, what is this area? What could be in here, Vic? Hmm. We're about to see in three, two, one. So you're the ghost ghost. You look pretty real to me. What do you hey, think? Boy. Who's a good boy? Who's Them a dogs. Good puppy, puppy, puppy. Do they look like they're killer dogs? No. They don't look like killer dogs at all, do they? They actually yeah. look very sweet. Hey boy, who's got you playing <laughs> ghost, huh? These dogs are kept underground in this tunnel. So let's see what kind of stuff we have here. Look at this. Dental glow. Glow in the dark toothpaste. It makes the dog's teeth glow. And what's this? Silent Sonic's dog whistle. Your dog can hear it, but you can't. Mm -hmm. watch, watch what happens when I press this. These dogs have been trained to act vicious on command. See, this sonic sound makes them go crazy because they don't like it, and they start barking. You turn it off? It's gone. So, as you can see, these dogs have been trained to do what they've been doing. 
here's a key with the uh, initials MM for Mickey Malone. What kind of stuff do we have here? That's I see some I speaker the boxes. House. I wonder who it is. I I really do. <laughs> see what else we got? We got yellow eye things. We have tabloids. We have magazines. Hot, exclusive celebrity gossip. Who's cool, who's not? Giant roach found in man's bathtub. So what's new, says DC police. Mayan temples used as alien landing pads. Glyphs hold key to evidence. Lose 50 pounds in a day and live. The Faniac. For the ultimate movie fan. Movie reviews, celebrity news, and more. Look who's back. Despite the Royal Palladium fiasco, Brady Armstrong makes a comeback and destiny shines forth. What are your thoughts on this, Vic? <laughs> um, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. And what do we have here? Let's read, shall we? <clears throat> the Doc Malone comb, cameo pin, two bottles empty, five coins, rumor going around Lake that Malone house has been sold find gold now 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 eddie and share stinky breath must brush their teeth a bottle cognac bowl tiara rusted a key with the initials mm doggy checkup time return titanic to val's video same time overdue Rumor true, sale Malone house, final, still no sign of gold, time for plan D, as in dog. Extra treat for Cher for being so good. Silver flask, three empty bottles, two plates slightly damaged, too cold to drag store nets for winter, take MM key found in lake, show Chuck. Get hair done while at Harrisburg. Vet lab reports in, all dogs are good. Buy extra happy hound hab snacks. New owner moving in late April. Order electronic whistles, speakers, transmitter, eye lights, Gary's gadgets, and gizmos. There's the number. Chuck says MM key special made from Malone in 1931. Gold heist key, try in tool shed, speakeasy, Malone house, closets, old trunks. No gold. Tiles on mosaics and tunnel. Push in and out. Who to wear gold is? Think, think, think. Sally McDonald, 27. Freelance photographer. For tunnel, kennel, need food bowls, flea colors. 20% off sale, well pets. Doggy beds, squeaky toys, chew bones. Sally McDonald moving in April 19th. Work on mosaics one by one. Push every tile. Nothing happens. Malone and his stupid puzzles can take a flying leap. Dogs ready for haunting. Wish I could sick them on Malone. Sally M. Gone. Who is Nancy Drew? Get out nets. Repair check boat. Nancy Drew knows about gold. Must find before she does. What did Bruce and Merrill roll in during exercise time? Might as well give him a bath. Do you have a clue of who wrote this? By any chance, Vic? Uh, the speakers make me think it's still red, but then the journal makes me think of Half of the other cast members in the thing. So you, by reading this, you still don't know who it is? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. I really thought that'd be a dead giveaway. <laughs> I bet the dogs attacked Sally's house because the high frequency signal was transmitted to them through the speaker I saw on the roof. You've been trained to respond to a silent signal from this thing, haven't you? Well, I mean, the, the equipment is more of a giveaway for me than the book. Yeah. I mean, who who's always prepared for everything? Mm-hmm. Red. But do you find the journal really interesting that it kept talking about things that were being collected? Yeah. True. Well, you know what? We found a key. And I think I know what it's for. I think it's for that door we tried to open. 
So the question is, do I have to input the information again? I think I do. That's okay. I'll do it again. And we will open the door. See what's inside. And here we go. area some kind of vault yeah gotta pick that up put that there it's locked hmm okay there we go it's locked okay it's locked Mm -hmm. It's locked. Doesn't that sound so familiar? It's locked. See what's down here. <gasps> oh, I bet this is their birth years. Let's see. Okay, green. That'd be twenty two for Lucy. Red is 23, blue is 24, and yellow is 1919, it would be a 19. Oh, wait, no? Oh, huh. Would it be the month? Maybe it's- By the, the month, it's okay. a month. Okay. It's two. Okay, that'd be 11, and loose, uh, blue would be February, that'd be 0, 2, okay, red, that'd be, uh, that'd be 0, 8, I think August is the 8th month. Oh, wait, no. Oh, wow. Uh, is it the day they were born? Maybe it was the day. Let's see. Okay. The 16th? No. Oh my goodness. I am dumped. Um, I have their birth years. I have the months. I have the days. Red... Red doesn't end, doesn't have a six or an eight, so that's that's what's confusing me. It only goes up to five. Um. All right, I am stumped with this. I might need to get a hint. Oh, Sunny, there you are. We should show Sunny I... what we found. Sunny, we found something. We found this vault. I better make sure this door is closed all the way before I fool around with anything else. I want to show you this. Okay, you need you need to see the evidence too. We 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 found the speakeasy, went underground, and then we opened this door. And I'll show you what's in it. You ready? Oh. Yes. We got some dogs, and they're not violent right These now. These dogs seem really friendly. Exactly. So someone's been using them. 
And let me show you what we found here. Glow in the dark toothpaste. Something that makes the dogs bark. Mm. And then we went over here and found more things. Speakers. Mm. I harness things. Tabloids. No comment, still. Right. I thought you oh. did. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. I get it. And then more importantly, we found yeah. a we found a uh, found a little journal. It lists random things like home. Oh, sold. Find gold now, now, now. Uh, interesting. One ball. Let's get another stab at this. We are in the who did it. Tiara, on key initials M F. Hmm. And I'm gonna take another stab at it. Wait, no, sure. no, no, no. We need Sonny to get his guess in. You already gave yours. Uh, yeah. Fine. I want Sonny I to guess give me. It's his the guess. um. It's that uh, uh. Shop owner. Okay. All right, Vic. What's your guess? I was gonna go back to that. You both think it's the shop owner. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. We'll see. I have to figure out what to do with that puzzle, though, with the dogs. What's her name? Emily. Emily. Emily, okay. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember how to do the puzzle that you just saw me at. I was trying to enter their birth years, but then the numbers weren't... Birth year didn't work. Yeah, Month the numbers work. weren't lining Day up, Day didn't so... work. Oh, I don't know if I can even get out. Oh no! <laughs> I think I'm gonna be stuck down here. Oh no! Is there really no other way out? Oh, I'm stuck down here until we solve the puzzle. Um. Okay, so I really am stuck. I can't even leave. So I have no choice. I have to solve it. Okay. Okay. Gee, I... I'm this close to finding the gold. I just know it. Look, it's locked. If only I knew how to solve this. These colors look very familiar. Yes, they, 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 they represent the different colors on the, the collars. I wrote them down. Vitus' collar is blue, Xander's is red, Lucy's is green, and Iggy's is yellow. And then I wrote down their birthdays and their years. The, so I was going, tried death years? Death years. I didn't write down their death years. I didn't even know there were death years. For oh, dog. Actually, actually, they all died in 32, I think. Actually, no, we not. I'm not sure. I'm not See, sure when they died. I was trying to put 1919 for Iggy, but it doesn't go to nine. So that's when I stopped using birth years because it was lining up for the others like 24, 23, 22. But then when I went to Iggy for being born in 1919, I went, well, that's not going to work because there is no nine for Iggy. Mm. In fact, I don't think any of the numbers go up to nine. They only go up to five. So. What, is, what does that mean? What, what would go up to five at the latest? And then... You tried the, day, the days? I tried... Well, Xander was born on the 16th, so that wouldn't mm. work. Because it only goes okay. up to five. And I tried the months. August is when Xander was born. It doesn't go up to eight. So now I'm like, what? What does it want me to do? Maybe if I keep pulling back and coming back in. Maybe if I keep leaving and coming back, Nancy will keep helping me. Yeah, I'll just, like... I'll leave. 
I'll be like, Nancy, I can't do this. And I'll turn around. And then I'll go back and I'll see if she's like, huh. Each color could match up with one of Malone's dogs, but what about those numbers? Exactly. What about the numbers? What could these numbers have to do with the dogs? Is it the amount of numbers in their name? Is it? No. I'm gonna leave and come back again. I need, an, I need another hint, Nancy. I'm not sure what you want with those numbers. I tried years, I tried the dates. What am I not thinking of? We don't have a cell phone, so we couldn't call Bess and George to tell us what on earth these numbers are for. I mean, I know... Maybe I'm just going... Okay, so... Assuming we're doing birth years... You'd be 24. Lucy would be 22. Xander would be I'm just, I'm really, I'm tr really just going here. Is it 25? <laughs> no. Oh, goodness. What, what am I not thinking of? Was there something in, in, in the journal we saw? With the notes? Maybe the numbers have something to do with a dog's names. The dog's name? <gasps> oh! Oh, the dog's names! Mm. You know, I just realized the dog's names, they're Roman numerals. Now, oh, hey, okay. So, V, vi, vi, Vitus, is, is a five. Mm -hmm. So, it'd be zero, five. Yeah, okay. Uh, Xander is an X. That'd be red, and that would be a ten. Ten. So, let me, let me write, um... Ten zero five zero five. Uh, Iggy is a is a one, and I forgot what L is. Let me look it up. Roman numeral. One name? No. Oh, uh, for for Lucy would it be a three. Uh, fifty. It's fifty. That's what L is. Yeah, fifty. Okay, so 50, and we got 10, and then 5, and then 
is gone. I thought I picked it up. Badge work? Go get it. I have to go get the wheel. No, 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 not that wheel. Uh. Can I take it? Thank you. Pounds of gold bullion. Wow. I'm gonna save the game because we're gonna need to. Because yeah. it's about to go down. Uh oh. The game's gonna go down, guys. I'm gonna be the end of the let's play for now. Hey there, Nancy. Hey, Why, knew it. What on Emily. We got here. I can't let Emily catch me. Uh. Always seem to throw everyone else under the bus. If I don't keep moving, Emily will catch me. Yeah, some nasty. Not where you just came from. No. There's plenty of gold here we can share. Let me out of here, Nancy. Nancy, wait. Let's talk about this. This could just <laughs> be our little secret. You scratch my back, I scratch yours, remember? Nancy! The gold's all yours, Em. Enjoy it while you can. Dear Ned, as soon as I got out of the tunnels, Emily had left a door open. I called the sheriff. But when I led him back down the well to the room where I'd left Emily, she refused to leave. He and his deputies finally got her out, but one of them said afterward that if he had to choose between getting a bear away from her cub and getting Emily away from that gold, he'd pick the bear. What's worse, by the time they took Emily away, the place was swarming with reporters from all over the country. The commotion has scared away every bird for miles. I'm pretty sure Red Knot would like to strangle me. On the other <laughs> hand, when Ranger Akers found out that seven cars and two helicopters were illegally parked on park property, and that he was going to get to ticket them, he was ecstatic. <laughs> Tucker Dave has finally cleared away that dead tree, which means I'm free to drive home. Moon Lake is beautiful, but I've had enough wildlife for now. Which reminds me, did I mention that those four ghost dogs are actually very sweet? They're so sweet, in fact, that Sally is seriously thinking about adopting them. How's that for irony? Ever yours, Nancy. I do it. Yes, hi, it's Nancy. I'm at this little amusement park on the coast. I wish I could say I was having a wonderful time, but the fact is, some pretty spooky things have been happening here. There have been some strange accidents. And the carousel, it starts up in the dead of night all by itself, like it's haunted or something. You know me, I don't get scared very easily, but I saw it myself, and I'll call you later. I've got to go, I've got to go right now. Oh, no. Go to theater near you. So, what did you guys think? That was pretty good, and I kind of figured it was her for a while, for a long while. Yeah, was she just too nice? Not, not just that. She, it was very well established that she was too um, eager for money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she was willing to do any kind of scavenging, scavenging together. Why wouldn't she want to get the mm -hmm. hidden gold? Um. I didn't think it was Ned. How was his name? Right? Bird watcher. Red. Red. I Ned didn't think it was him. Nancy's boyfriend. 
I wouldn't think it would be him because all that commotion would be kind of productive to his bird watching. He might not be a nice guy, but he I might be the nicest guy about that. But, but I mean, it'd be counterproductive to his bird watching. Um, and as for the cop, he just seemed way too uptight about the law, so. Mm -hmm. And he admitted he just wanted to separate himself from his family legacy, so. Or his grandfather's legacy, anyway. So it, I didn't think it was just. I didn't think it was him. Mm hmm. What did you think, Vic? I actually rather enjoyed this one. You did? Yes. Good. Would you say it's your favorite yet, or do you still like some of the older ones? I'm not gonna lie, I, I do like the... the one with the, the red hand. Oh, the mining one! I do like that one, because I, I do like the... the educational value of it. Yes. But then again, I studied mythology in high school, so yeah. Oh? Okay. How about you, Sunny? Is this your favorite? I want to say it's my favorite still. You still um, like the treasure one? I think so. Yeah. Mm, no. I really like this one, though. I really good. And I can't wait for the next one. I think it's the Haunted Carousel, something like that. I'm getting the title wrong, but that's going to be oh, exciting. Perfect October games. Yeah, sure. October in November. <laughs> but I do want to thank no Sunny. Bad. I want to thank Sunny and Vic for co-hosting this episode of Nancy Drew. Thank you so much, you two, for being here for the mystery. I'm really glad I got to be here for the whole entire game. Yes. Yeah, not me 30 minutes later. It's fine. All right, well, I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Yep, see ya. Well, there you have it. It was Emily. Yep. Old Emily Griffith, who kept digging the lake beds with her net, trying to look for treasure illegally. She wanted to find that gold of Mickey Malone, but we got, we, we caught her. And the dogs are hopefully going to go to nice homes because they can't be used anymore to scare Sally off her property. And hopefully Sally moves back into the house now that Nancy's solved the crime. But I certainly hope you guys enjoyed the mystery. We'll be back with the next one. I think it's called Secret of the Haunted Carousel or something along those lines. And I'm looking forward to playing that one for you guys. But if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I love meeting more Nancy Drew fans. Thank you so much for all the support. Remember, you are special and loved. You are never alone. You're always welcome to come hang out with us anytime. And shout out to the Discord audience for watching the recording. If you want to be in the Discord, let me know. We film all the Let's Plays in there. <laughs> but until next time, God bless. And thank you, as always, for watching. <laughs>